the goal of safely decommissioning and restoring the site and readying the property for unrestricted use and redevelopment. The decisions we make on this case will have profound impacts, not only on the lower Hudson Valley, but we will be looked at by communities in Wayne and Oswego counties who host New York State's other commercial reactors and spent fuel storage facilities. One aspect of this endeavor needs to be pointed out. Even with a successful decommissioning and restoration of the Indian Point plants and site, the failure of the federal government's legislative duties to dispose of commercial reactor spent fuel will result in thousands of pounds of highly radioactive material remaining on site for many, many years. I very much appreciated the comments from this morning, and I look forward to hearing from the comments shared this evening as the Public Service Commission deliberates the petition at hand. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Commissioner Howard. I'd like to turn to the PowerPoint presentation that those of you participating electronically will be able to see. My apologies to anyone on the phone or participating by phone. I'm going to be reviewing these slides, but hopefully you will gain an understanding about how we intend to proceed this evening if you are listening in by phone. So let me talk a little bit about the purpose and the nature of this proceeding. This is a public statement hearing at which members of the public provide comments about this proceeding and the petition Entergy Nuclear Indian Point has presented to the commission requesting either a declaratory judgment disclaiming jurisdiction over the proposed transfer of ownership to Holtec International or alternatively seeking a commission uh, order authorizing that transfer pursuant to public service law section 70. Now, just by way of background, and many of you already know, the Indian Point nuclear facilities are located in the village of Buchanan in Westchester County. And the facilities include three nuclear power reactors, three spent fuel pools, generators, transformers, spent fuel, petroleum and waste storage facilities, water intake and outflow structures, and other nuclear-related support facilities and infrastructure. Entergy, the applicant, proposes to transfer the entire site and all the facility components to Holtec International, that is, Holtec International subsidiaries at which time there will be decommissioning, site restoration, and spent fuel management activities. Let me then just now discuss the type of hearing this is and what it is not. This, unlike a lot of hearings that we do uh, within the Department of Public Service, this is not an evidentiary hearing at which witnesses are cross-examined and evidence is admitted. It's also not a question and answer session. Instead, it's an opportunity for you to provide the commission with your comments. All of your comments made or otherwise submitted during this proceeding will be considered by the commission. As you probably heard, a court reporter is in attendance and a verbatim transcript of the hearings will be made and included in the record for the commission's review. Let me now talk a little bit about the logistics and procedures and guidance. This is the technical uh, information that I want you to listen closely to because it'll take up a little bit more time than we want to if we don't follow these procedures. As noted in the secretary's February 12, 2021 notice, I will be calling speakers on a registered list. They have requested- Gorin, um, uh, Town Supervisor uh, Joe Saladino, Town of Oyster Bay, and Nassau County Legislator Delia Derigi Whitten. So, uh, Senator Gorin, are you with us? Uh, 
Hello, I'm here. Welcome. Um, we okay. hear you. If, you. if you want us to see you, hit the button. Um, Which, and if not, that's fine too. Uh, I'm hitting the button under my name. Is there another button to hit? <laughs> There uh, should be a, a start a start video button. You know, I'm just I'm I'm, I'm a state senator. Clear. I'm a state okay. senator. That that is too hard to ask us to look for a link that says start video. Well, as long as you're not presenting yourself as a cat, we're we're, we're better than okay. some others. Okay. Well, f well, thank you uh, so much, uh, uh, Rory, for this and. Uh, and I, I see others on the call. I do see uh, Commissioner Tracy Edwards. Um, so shout out to Tracy and there may be others that I don't see, but because uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the department and I certainly want to also thank the commission and the governor, um, not only for giving us this opportunity this evening, but for taking this issue, you know, so, so seriously, because there have the people that I represent in, Seacliff, uh, Glenhead, Glenwood uh, Landing, and, you know, and a few other people in some of the other communities surrounding have just been going through this nightmare. Uh, as have other residents of Nassau County uh, uh, in, you know, in other Senate districts paying for private water and in some cases five, six, seven times more uh, for a bill and their neighbor behind them may be in the Jericho Water District and pays uh, significantly less. Uh, Water is, uh, you know, is something that is a right to everybody. Look what's going on in the state of Texas right now. And thank God we have much better public officials at all level than, than, than we have in the state of Texas. But look at what's going on down there. And here it's a question of uh, the, the people that I represent and the others involved in this. We have to end this. We need public water. Um, and that's why I'm fully supportive of these efforts to to do this study, to complete this study. Uh, I do have to say that the folks that I represent, um, you know, thanks to uh, you know the, the, the leadership uh, that we have in the community and the village of Seacliff stepping up to uh, agree to do a study and funding that I was able to get through the Senate as well as my predecessor, uh, Senator Marcelino. Uh, we are well on our way. We have a feasibility study. We know a lot of the facts um, and we are prepared to go to public water. Uh, I have legislation to create a North Shore Water Authority, which is modeled after uh, other water authorities, including the Suffolk County Water Authority that I once chaired, Great Neck Water Authority, which was created years ago when Tom DiNapoli was in the State Assembly. It is simply to have an entity so that there can be these discussions uh, towards public water. Uh, Jericho Water District, we appreciate that they're taking a hard look at this, but the 4,500 individual uh, residents um, of the people I represent can't negotiate you know, with Jericho Water District. You can't have 4,500 people uh, negotiate. They need an entity to do it. Seacliff can't totally do it because they don't represent uh, the the people outside the sea cliff, and you know they would be represented by by the town of Oyster Bay, and I am glad that uh, you know Supervisor Saladino is 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 joining us, and you know he would be a, a major part. To repeat the comments of others, so if you are registered for both the afternoon and evening sessions, I would ask that you reconsider speaking this evening in favor of those who did not speak at this afternoon's session. Finally, I want you to know that we may hear some feedback from you if you have more than one device open. So if you have your computer and your phone, we may hear feedback and have to cut you off. You also may hear feedback. And finally, if you're having technical problems, I want you to call this number. No guarantees that we can solve your technical problems, but let's give it a go. So the number is 800. 342-3330. Now, there are other ways to comment, as I mentioned before, and these are not only explained in the Secretary's February 12th notice, they also appear on your screen. It's very important that if you're making comments by mail or email or by phone or electronically in our department's website, 
you refer to case 19E0730. Again, you'll see that on your screen, but for those on the phone, you must have your comments refer, they're submitted separately then this evening, to 19E0730. I will now proceed to take public comments. Again, as a reminder, after I call your name, I will let you know when your line has been unmuted. Please state and then spell your name and any organization with which you are affiliated. I will let you know I can hear you and then direct you to proceed. Don't forget to unmute your computer or your telephone and speak slowly and clearly so that the court reporter can accurately capture your statement. Our first speaker is Assemblyman James Pretlow. Assemblyman Pretlow. My name is James Gary Pretlow, spelled G-A-R-Y P-R E-T-L-O-W, and I'd like to submit a public statement in support of the joint petition of Intergy Nuclear and Holtec International regarding the sale of Indian Point Energy Center for the purpose of prompt decommissioning. As a longtime supporter of nuclear power and the Indian Point in particularly for its carbon-free electric power and contributions to the region, I was saddened by its closure. However, we must now look to the future. Prompt decommissioning of the shutdown nuclear units at Indian Point is in the best interest of the greater Westchester community, in my opinion. A transfer of ownership to Holtec International and subsidiaries will bring leading edge technology and, and continuity of employment for key local employees. Holtex plans to initiate decommissioning at the Indian Point Energy Center promptly following regula regulatory approvals decades sooner than would take place under Entergy's continued ownership. With robust financial assurances, a closing condition to honor local and, and municipal labor agreements and a track record of similar transactions for prompt or expedited decommissioning of shuttered nuclear units taking place in other states. I believe timely approval of New York State Public Service Commission of this transaction is in the best public interest under Section 70 of the New York State Public Services Law. Thank you very much. Thank you, Assemblyman Pretlow. Um, I'd next like to call uh, Peekskill City Council member Vanessa Agudello. Not seeing uh, Council member Agudello. Okay, I'd like to next call um, Catherine Borgia, Westchester County Board of Legislators. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, holding this hearing. I think it's very, very important for all of the issues regarding the decommissioning of Indian Point be, uh, be aired and considered uh, by the PSC. Um, I represent the area, though I do not represent the plant, I represent across the street from the plant and much of the surrounding area around Indian Point. So uh, this is very significant for my constituents. I also personally live about six miles away from the plant. Um, I have some grave concerns about the transfer of the license because I do believe that there that Holtec plan relies on some assumptions that might not be correct and that Holtec as an organization does not have a proven track record of doing safety commissioning as well as um, some of the um, some of the incidents that have happened with Holtec as a company in other places in the United States. Um, three things that I'm very concerned about uh, is that we know now that Entergy is very closely monitored by the NRC. In fact, there's NRC members on site all the time at the, at the plant. We wanna make sure that Holtec or whoever winds up doing the decommissioning also has a level of security that keeps the people of 
the surrounding area and all of Westchester County and quite frankly, all of the greater New York City area safe. Um, because we know that the uh, spent fuel rods, uh, you know, there's a process by which they need to be moved from the pools. The pools are currently overcrowded into the dry cast storage. Um, I also was disappointed when Holtec came to the community to several community meetings that they didn't have real answers about the long term viability of the dry cast storage. We agree that dry cast storage is the safest way to hold nuclear waste uh, for the long term. However, there are enhanced dry casts available that it does not seem Holt that Holtec was using. And also it did not seem like it, that they had an answer for how they would know if something was going wrong within the dry cast storage. I also have a great financial concern because it seemed from the plan that as it was presented to us, that they are intending to use some of the decommissioning trust funds in a way that is not uh, authorized and also um, that they are dependent on a certain growth in money from the decommissioning trust funds and there was no plan for what would happen if that growth did not occur who would be left footing the bill for any costs that would be associated with um, either the decommissioning or any problem that should occur during the decommissioning. So I thank you for giving a thorough review to this, um, to all of these questions. I think it is very significant. Every single nuclear power plant is going to close eventually. This is a very large plant with in a significant uh, population density center. And I think this is the opportunity to make a decommissioning be the best case scenario versus something where we're um, sort of flying by the seat of our pants and learning as we go. So uh, thank you again for uh, listening. As I said, I am Catherine Borgia, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, Borgia, B-O-R-G-I-A, and I'm the Westchester County legislator representing District 9. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I now call Colin Smith, also from the Westchester County Board of Legislators. Mr. Smith, are you on the line? Yep. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Go ahead and proceed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Colin Smith, C-O-L-I-N-S-M-I-T-H, and I am the uh, Westchester County Legislator for District 1 which includes Buchanan, where the Indian Point power plant is located. Um, this is a complex issue, as, as we all know, and so I will try and make my comments brief and hopefully not, uh, not uh, entirely duplicative of earlier uh, comments. Uh, the decommissioning of Indian Point will be a long and arduous process. The magnitude of this undertaking dictates that the New York State regulatory process cannot be waived or rushed. Rather, the decommissioning and site restoration plans must be carefully considered and evaluated and regulated with due diligence. We urge you, the Public Safety Commission, to re uh, retain jurisdiction, review the proposed transfer, and take a hard look to determine whether the contemplated transactions and transfers are in the public interest. Um, as, I, as I noted, or as has been noted um, over the uh, past few years, uh, both Holtec and Entergy have sought to engage the community and, and allay uh, fears and concerns uh, that have been raised. Those efforts are appreciated. Uh, yet as such, uh, there are still serious and substantial concerns that are critical to the economic and environmental well-being of the residents of Westchester County. Matters requiring substantive examination, uh, which include concerns about the financial wherewithal and technical capacity of Holtec and its subsidiaries to properly complete the work as well as the sufficiency of plans and resources to ensure the safety of our residents during this process. Uh, I would also ask that the Public Service Commission engage in an inquiry to determine whether the decommissioning trust fund is adequately capitalized to fully cover the cost of decommissioning the Indian Power Plant, um, and whether there are viable contingency plans to the extent that there may be a shortfall. There needs to be reliable assurances that there will be adequate money to pay for non-decommissioning exp expenses such as nuclear waste and site restoration, as well as the costs associated with unanticipated risks of the discovery of additional radiologic or non-radiologic contaminants. Having said that, I recognize that the uh, decommissioning of the power plant is a necessary and inevitable process, and one which will provide a measure of economic stability for at least some of those currently employed who will be allowed to remain on. 
as well as any additional labor needed to effectuate the shutdown. This will be an important factor in continued local economic growth, but we must proceed prudently and with full knowledge of all the facts and circumstance, circumstances surrounding whole tech's ability to complete this, the monumental task ahead. In closing, uh, I ask that uh, I, I feel strongly that uh, the attempt to have this body disclaim jurisdiction runs counter to public policy uh, and contravenes the public interest. Government oversight is essential in this process. The nuclear industry is the most highly regulated in our nation, and the decommissioning of one of our oldest plants is simply too consequential to be shielded from public oversight. I therefore implore you to reject Holtec's petition, retain jurisdiction in this oversight process. This is the only way to truly ensure the public good. Uh, again, my name is Colin Smith, and uh, I thank you for the opportunity to comment this evening. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I next call Ruth Walters, also Westchester County Board of Legislators. You know, let's get Ruth up and running and then, you know, and, and then go on. I mean, I'd love, ideally, I'd love to get another job and also keep this. Okay, we're going to skip Miss Walters and go to um, the telephone. Could you mute Miss Walters? Thank you. Uh, we're going to have to go back to Ms. Walters because we were getting, uh, I guess, a separate phone call um, in uh, that. I'm now going to turn to those who have registered to speak by telephone. And when I call your name again, you're going to have to hit star three on your telephone pad so that you can identify for us who you are. I'm first going to call the Reverend Adolphus Lacey, and on deck will be Joseph Foskett, both of whom are telephone uh, call-in participants. Reverend uh, Lacey, are you out there? Would you please press star three on your telephone keypad so we can see if you are in attendance? I'm not seeing anything. Mr. White, are you seeing anything? No, no, Your Honor, I do not see a hand raised. Okay, let's go to Mr. Foskett and Mr. Spector. Hersel Spector, you are on deck as the next speaker. Spector is on deck. Thank you. Next speaker. Mr. Mr. Foskett, I see him. Mr. Yes, Joe Foskett is unmuted. Perfect. Mr. Foskett, go ahead. Okay, thank goodness. I was uh, trying to frantically call in there, so thank you. Good evening. My name is Joseph Foskett, J-O-S-E-P-H-F-O-S-K-E-T-T, -T, and I'm Director of Government Affairs at the Business Council of New York State. The Business Council represents over 2,300 businesses across New York State and serves as an advocate for a robust business climate, economic growth, and jobs. A foundational tenet of our organization is that when businesses succeed, New York succeeds, from local economies to employment, to tax revenue for the state and local governments. As the State Chamber of Commerce, we believe it is of paramount importance that the Indian Point site be restored to active use as expeditiously as possible so that municipalities and school districts can start receiving much needed tax revenue, economic development can begin, and hopefully new jobs can be created. Thus, the Business Council supports rapid decommissioning of Indian Point and is supportive of new innovative models that would expedite the decommissioning of nuclear facilities within the state. The Business Council has long supported nuclear power as an emissions-free source of clean energy, and we're concerned about what impact the closure of the Indian Point Energy Center would have on local economies and jobs. Similar to many communities across the state, the loss of a major employer can have a significant impact on small businesses, local governments, and school districts. But Indian Point Unit 2 was permanently retired on April 30th, 2020, and Unit 3 will be permanently retired by April 30th, 2021, which is just over two months from now. After that, the site will no longer be used as a nuclear power generating facility. So the essential question is, what happens next? Energy, Energy does not claim to possess the requisite technical nor operational capabilities to conduct decommissioning activities, and thus opted to transfer Indian Point to a specialized company to facilitate decommissioning and timely redevelopment of the site. Holtec International, according to its reputation, as well as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, possesses the requisite technical and financial capabilities to perform, perform the required work safely and efficiently. Being able to draw 
upon its unique knowledge and expertise, which has been gained from experience decommissioning similar facilities. Holtec's stated plan is to initiate decommissioning at Indian Point promptly following regulatory approvals and close of the transaction, and it expects to release a majority of the site for reuse by the 2030s, which is as much as 40 years sooner than if Entergy continued to own the facility. Importantly, Hol Holtec will also continue to employ more than 300 current Indian Point employees and has stated that it will, it will honor all existing collective bargaining agreements, which is an important component of mitigating local impacts through this otherwise challenging time. Now, the Business Council does not and cannot claim to be experts with regard to the more technical aspects of license transfer applications, such as the adequacy of cost estimates or spent fuel management. But as stated earlier, we are advocates for economic growth, jobs, and the kind of overall prosperity that raises all ships. As such, the Business Council supports rapid decommissioning of Indian Point to expedite site reuse and supports the joint petitioner's request. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I now call um, Hersel Spector. Mr. Spector, are you listed? I don't see you, so I'm going to skip you and go to Lucinda Torres. Lucinda Torres, are you on the line? Okay, I, I want to make clear, I'm going to move to those registered electronically, but I want to make clear to all of the participants that when I call your name, you will be unmuted. There's no need to raise your hand. If you are a call-in user, yes, you, you need to press star three. Um, I do also want to say that um, raising your hand is not going to have you be called any sooner. So just be aware that we're going in a particular order. And I apologize, but there's lots and lots of speakers tonight. There's nearly 100 people uh, participating. Um, so but bear with us. Um, I'm now going to move to the electronic um, participants. And the first is Alan Goldhammer. And Andrew Farron, you are on deck as the next speaker. So Alan Goldhammer, are you available to speak? Yep, I see him. Can you unmute Mr. Goldhammer? Yep, Mr. Goldhammer, I think you're unmuted. I'm not hearing you though. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now, thank you. Please proceed. Good. My name is Alan Goldhammer, A-L-L-A-N-G-O-L-D-H-A-M-M-E-R. I'm going to speak generally. I've done a little bit of reading about Holtec. I think well, from what I understand, the NEC is a, a captured agency and, and will bend regulations and laws that are meant to protect the public. I'm a New York State citizen. I've been here my whole life, and I'm, we're really relying on you to do the careful job here. Quickly, uh, quickly decommissioning Indian Point is far less important than doing it safely and properly. This is uh, some of the, one of the first plants that are being decommissioned. Somebody with experience with it can use this as a model to do it better. It's a very public location right near New York City. This is the time to do it right. I'd like you to work on understanding, work on uh, looking at the reasons that Holtec should be rejected for this and that other firms are available to do better, and, but to make no decisions until uh, the New York State Attorney, Attorney General case against Holtec that questions Holtec's financial solvency has been resolved and also a case by Riverkeeper is resolved. I think a lot of information will surface during that, which will help you make a wise decision here. I'm relying on you for this, and I hope you'll be very careful. Thank you, that's all I need to say. Thank you for your comment. Our next speaker is Ann Summers. Did I, do I have this right? Did we just hear from Mr. Farron? I'm sorry. 
No, I'm calling Andrew Ferron, I believe. And I'm not seeing you on here. Okay, let's go to Miss Summers, Ann Summers. Yes, and here my deck is Bernard Brady. Go ahead, Miss Summers, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, my name is Ann, A N N E Summers, S U M E R S M D. I'm a citizen of Montrose, New York. I'm a retired doctor and I'm a grandmother. I'm sitting in my kitchen and I can see Indian Point from my kitchen window. Do not let Entergy sell Indian Point to Holtec. Holtec is a company with a history of lying. Holtec is not a de decommissioning company. Safety is much more important here than speed. There is no reason to rush this. No amount of radiation is safe. None. No amount of radiation is safe. I'm a doctor and there's no safe radiation. Holtec is not a trustworthy company. They have lied to regulators. They have lied to banks. The World Bank and the Tennessee Valley Authority will not work with them because they lie. Why are we trusting them now? Holtec is not a nuclear power decommissioning company. They say they can do it faster, but we know they are a company with a track record of lying. They say they will do this safety, but they have lied and lied to regulators in the past. Don't let Entergy sell to Holtec. Why assume that they're telling the truth now? In Fukushima and in Chernobyl, the authorities said they were being safe. Hundreds of thousands of citizens died horrible deaths. What is the rush? Let's protect our children and my grandchildren. Let's contract with a company that is experienced in nuclear decommissioning. I would like every politician who speaks in favor of Holtec to start out with how much money each politician has received from Entergy or Holtec. Let's hire a trustworthy and experienced company to decommission Indian Point. And let's let this trustworthy, experienced company take as much time as needed to safely decommission this power plant. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. I am next going to call Bernard Brady and Brian Lemaire, you are on deck. Uh, I don't see Mr. Brady, but if you are as a call, signed up as a call-in user, please press star three on your phone now. Okay, let's go to Brian Lemaire. Mr. Lemaire, are you great? Ah, uh, yes. Sir. I can hear I, you. I'm here. Um, I actually spoke this afternoon, so uh, I don't need to speak again. Thank you. You are so kind. Thank you so much. And um, certainly your comments are on the record. Okay, next I am calling Catherine Skopik and Courtney Williams. You are on deck. Catherine Skopik? I don't see. Catherine Skopik, okay. Your Honor, Your Honor uh, Catherine spoke this afternoon, so she might not be present. Okay, great. Thank you. I missed that. Okay, um, next is Courtney Williams. Uh, I don't have an on deck person for you yet. Oh, Jay's, uh, Daisy Joplin is on deck. Miss Williams, are you are you there? Hi, yes, I am here. I did speak this afternoon and I'd like to cede my spot to someone who hasn't had the chance to speak yet. Your, Your Honor. Your Honor. I'm sorry, I'm talking and I'm on mute. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Um, Ms. 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 Williams has decided to give her space up for somebody else because she spoke this afternoon. I did hear that and I was thanking her profusely and calling. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> While I was on mute, I apologize. Daisy Jopling is who I'm calling now, if you could unmute her. And Dale, I think Dale Walkington, you are on deck. Ms. Jopling, are you there? You're unmuted. 
Yes, I'm yeah. here. So my name is Daisy Jopling, spelt D-A-I-S-Y-J-O-P-L-I-N-G. I run a music mentorship foundation and I'm a professional violinist. Entergy has been an important and exemplary corporate citizen throughout our region, generously supporting the work of many invaluable organizations and truly making a difference in our communities. As of April this year, the millions of dollars Indian Point pays in tax revenues will be gone. So we need a plan in place to continue the support of our communities. Holtec, according to its reputation and knowledge of the NRC, has that plan and the capabilities to carry it out. Our communities deserve the safest and timeliest decommission. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm next calling Daniel Cook and uh, on deck is Diane Turco. Mr. Cook, are you available? Yes, I am. Thank you. Can you hear me, Judge? Yes, go ahead. Great. Well, thank you very much, Judge Leary. Uh, good evening. My name is Daniel Cook, D-A-N-I-E-L, last name Cook. C-O-O-K-E. My career started nuclear power at Indian Point in 1984. I currently work for Entergy at Indian Point Energy Center. I am for the proposed sale of IPEC to Holtec and urge the PSC to support this transaction so the Indian Point site can move forward with its ongoing legacy in Westchester County. IPEC has supplied clean power to New York and provide thousands of jobs, including my own, for many decades. The early closure of IPEC poses several critical challenges, not the least of which is returning the site to its full potential as an economic engine. This is among the reasons why Holtec's proposed decommissioning plan is so important. Holtec's plan puts the village and region ahead on economic development path by about 40 years giving the region and the state the opportunity to reap benefits sooner than under Entergy's safe store scenario. The sooner Holtec can commence the repurposing of the IPEC site, the sooner the surrounding communities and the state will be able to reap the benefits of this property and its prime location. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you very much for your comments. I'm now calling Diane Turco. And Edward Cook, you are on deck. Ms. Turco. You're not unmuted yet, so bear with us. There you go. You're on okay. the yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diane Turco. I'm the director of Cape Down Winders um, in Massachusetts, and we've been working um, on the Pilgrim nuclear power issue. And we just need to warn you folks in New York, when Holtec came to Pilgrim, they said that they had an impeccable safety record. And this was during the time when the San Onofre uh, was a reactor incident with the almost drop of a canister was being investigated by the NRC. And at that time, the NRC determined that the mismanagement, poor training, lack of oversight, everything you don't want to be in a company that's decommissioning a reactor. Um, but we said, well, how many reactors have you uh, decommissioned? In the same vice president said zero. Somebody said this is a corporation that knows how to decommission reactors and that's exactly it. Um, they also said they would be open and transparent. They promised the community they would answer our questions and, and just work with us. And in fact, the attorney general for the state of Massachusetts, Maura Healy, had to take them to court and have to, had to work through a settlement agreement just to get some basic safety and financial security in the plan. Also, one of the first things that Holtec, Holtec did was to file to the NRC to uh, remove the emergency planning. Now, we all know with the waste in the pool, moving the waste, there's still a danger of a radiological release. And now we only have an emergency plan that goes to the fence of the property. This our waste is still stuffed. The pool is still stuffed. So we're still at risk. If Holtec says they're about safety, they are not. One thing is 
there's a conflict of interest. They also buy their own thin walled canisters that can't be inspected, monitored, repaired, or the waste isn't retrievable. And they don't have a plan if there's a problem. So, you know, there's a conflict of interest that they're buying their own crappy canisters. So, you know, New York, do it once and do it right. Get a company that has a lot of experience in decommissioning. Like somebody else said, we don't trust Holtec, um, but don't do it with Holtec. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. I now call Ed Edward Cook and Elena Walker. You are on deck. Mr. Cook. I do see him. Uh, could you unmute Mr. Cook? For the first name, Your Honor, there's a few there's a few cook. Uh, what is the Daniel? Edward. Edward, Ed. thank you. Yes. I think it's just yeah, listed. I, got it. I, I apologize for that. Uh, no worries. Popped up. Thank you very much. Mr. Right. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yes, your line is unmuted. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I won't take up a lot of time as I spoke this morning as a, uh, a representative for the United Brotherhood of Carpenters this afternoon. This evening, I'm speaking as the recording secretary of the Westchester Putnam Building Trades. I've heard a lot of things about inexperience and uh, whole tech not having the right workforce to do this decommissioning. I can attest as I've uh, Indian point is 1 of my charges as a uh, union rep. We, in a 10 year period, we did 4 million hours of scaffolding without 1. Actual reportable incident, which is a testament to the safety record and training of the skilled men and women of the building trades. Uh, the skin, the, the men and women of the building trades have entered into an agreement with. Whole tech, which will provide the community the safest, smartest, and most talented craftsmen to protect their environment that they go home to every night and the surrounding areas and also create a vital uh, economic engine. With that, I thank you for your time and uh, everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Um, I definitely did not do a very good job cross referencing those who spoke at the afternoon session who are also registered to speak this evening. And I apologize for that, but I want to ask those of you who did have the opportunity to speak at the 1 PM session, not to speak this evening until everyone else has been heard. And then I will get to you. So you can indicate to me when I call you that you spoke this morning and either you want to say something later at the end of this session, or you don't need to. Uh, again, I appreciate those of you who have already um, waived your opportunity to speak tonight because you spoke this afternoon. Okay, I'm next calling Isaac Matu, M-A-T-T-O-O, -O, and Jennifer Baker, you are on deck. Mr. Matu, are you available? Uh, yes, I am. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, this is just in reference to the, and rather, my name is Isaac Matu, I S A A C M A T T O O. Um, my comments are in response to um, the doctor uh, previously, and um, there is a linear no threshold model for radiation. And that has been largely discredited as there is natural background radiation um, that we all live in. And it seems to be necessary for life to evolve. It's called hormesis. Um, and, uh, it's theorized that without radiation from the natural environment, that perhaps life would not exist as it does today. <clears throat> Secondly, um, in reference to um, the claims of um, tritium releases being a cancerous hazard, um, that is also not necessarily the case. Tritium is a very low level um, radioactive source and is actually um, found in watch hands and many other consumer devices with uh, very little risk to the public. Um, it is a um, expected um, sort of effluent from a nuclear plant and is in all of the um, documents for the Nuclear Regulatory, Regulatory Commission um, uh, expected and um, the only problem is with a public information and uh, 
updating the public as to what the nature of Ridley radiation is. Um, so it's really a fear of the unknown when it comes to that. Uh, thirdly, um, there is uh, the claim that the plant with its uh, once through passing cooling system is um, killing uh, billions of fish. And the inf unfortunate um, tabulation of this was that they're counting the fish larvae as fish. So the Atlantic sturgeon uh, found in that river that is um, unfortunately sometimes pulled through these grates have up to 200,000 larvae in them. And when one fish is uh, taken through the grate, it is counted as 200,000 fish um, killed. And that is in the, um, uh, rather the literature and the press releases from Riverkeeper. Um, and uh, just finally, the um, water coming out of the <coughs> uh, cooling system is at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That is true. However, because of the massive volume of water that passes through um, the Hudson River proper itself, um, that is essentially at thermal equilibrium. So it makes ultimately no difference to the river itself. And in fact, it is a better habitat for many of the species that Riverkeeper claims are um, endangered or on the um, sort of species watch list. In fact, in the entire region, uh, the Hudson River seems to be the healthiest and uh, most fecund, uh, most populous um, population of these various fish that are um, listed as problematic. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I hope that uh, we have a speedy resolution to um, what uh, is, is so contentious here. As usual, the um, solution may be between the two extremes. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful night and thank you again. Thank you for your comments. I now call Jennifer uh, Baker and Joe Karras. You are, or Karras, you are on deck. Miss Baker, are you available? You're on okay. You're good. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Baker, J E N N I F E R B A K K E R. I am a mother of three, a resident of Buchanan, and an employee at Indian Point. I grew up in Montrose, attending Hendrick Hudson Schools and I am a civil engineer by education. I'm an active participant in my community, both in my village government and within my children's schools. As a young professional, I worked 10 years in the New York construction industry, and in 2011, started my second career at Indian Point, with many roles, but first and foremost, a nuclear professional. Nuclear professionals are a proud bunch. No matter our job title, our role is the same. As nuclear professionals, we demonstrate attributes such as confidence and integrity. We set and reinforce high standards and we fo foster a culture to find and mitigate risk. We are a group of people who tirelessly strive to learn, learning from our past and preparing for our future. With the announcement of Indian Point's closure in early 2017, our future forever changed has challenged us in ways we never imagined. Entergy continues to instill a value of finishing strong and leaving a legacy of excellence, a legacy that those of us who will remain as part of the phase one organization will honor. The IPEC decommissioning organization and the announced phase one organization have been working along with Holtec over the past 24 months to ensure a smooth transition from an operating nuclear power plant to a decommissioning site. Haltech brings experience, innovation, and expertise in the area of decommissioning with a strategic plan to release the site for reuse sooner than if Entergy continued to own the facility. The phase one organization brings the knowledge, history, and understanding of how unique nuclear power is here within our community. I am proud to have been part of Entergy's legacy and honored to be part of Indian Point's future, always working to protect our community and our environment. I urge you to support this transfer and give Indian Point a future. Thank you very much. Um, I call Joe Karras or Karras and Ellen Weininger. You are on deck. Mr. Karras, are you there? Diana, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead and proceed. Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, I, I, my name is Joe Karras, K-A-R-A-S. I'm with the Carpenters Union here in the Hudson Valley. And of course, we want a safe decommissioning of the Indian Point facility. Uh, you know, those in favor of closing Indian Point originally now want to hinder the decommissioning process. 
uh, leaving this, this facility stagnant for the next 60 years is not acceptable or responsible. We need to take onus and not pass this on to our future generations. Uh, I want people to know that we here in the Northeast are extremely fortunate to have the availability of highly skilled unionized workers. Our workforce is the best, bar none. Okay, they're not unskilled, they're not ignorant, they're not stupid. They work hard, they're proud, they're professional. And I've seen non-union jobs and I've seen union jobs. And trust me, the union jobs are superior in their safety. I want the public to know that the workforce that would be part of this decommissioning is the, the best there possibly could be. We couldn't ask for a better workforce. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Elena, I'm sorry, Ellen Weininger, you are up. And John Sullivan, you are on deck. Ms. Weininger, are you available? Yes, can you hear me? I can, please proceed. Good, thank you for the opportunity to comment. My name is Ellen Weininger, E-L-L-E-N-W-E-I-N-I-N-G-E-R. I'm Director of Educational Outreach at Grassroots Environmental Education, a science nonprofit. We strongly urge the Public Service Commission to deny the Indian Point Line transfer to Holtec, a company with a serious history of safety violations, financial misdealings, and corruption. The New York State Attorney General's petition regarding Holtec's financial structure further confirms the serious concerns about the company's solvency. Furthermore, Holtec lacks decommissioning experience. Its poor track record would leave New York as extremely vulnerable and at significant risk of being left with no decommissioning trust fund and a slipshod and incomplete job with potentially dire consequences. You must also consider the fact that Holtec's post shutdown decommissioning activities report failed to even mention the three large diameter high pressure Algonquin gas transmission pipelines that cross the Indian Point site and any safety planning for them during the decommissioning process. It is the only nuclear power facility in the nation with gas transmission pipelines. They were installed adjacent to critical safety infrastructure in close proximity to the cooling pools and near significant earthquake fault lines. According to numerous experts, a pipeline rupture at the site would be catastrophic to New York in the East Coast. Your Department of Public Service the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services and other state agencies warned in your 2018 letter to FERC that, quote, NRC and FERC must coordinate a review of Entergy's decommissioning plan when filed to determine potential impacts to the original Algonquin pipelines and the AIM pipeline, given the heavy excavator work that will be part of decommissioning. FERC may need to require Enbridge to temporarily cease gas operations during the decommissioning activities that may threaten pipeline integrity, end quote. The report from the NRC Office of Inspector General called into question the safety of the pipelines at the site and cited the misrepresentation of the actual catastrophic risk by the NRC and Entergy. And the Sandia Lab, uh, National Laboratory's findings also confirm the catastrophic risk of a pipeline rupture at the site. In your March 26, 2020 letter to the NRC, you state your recommendation to, quote, address the risk posed by all of the pipelines to nuclear spent fuel storage and transfer, steam generator storage, and other decommissioning activities at the Indian Point site, end quote. You also state, quote, a severe spent fuel pool accident at Indian Point could have significant impacts on the surrounding area that would be unlike the impacts at any other nuclear site in the country, end quote. Have these catastrophic risks been resolved? Another company with Holtec's sordid history and lack of experience would be summarily disqualified for even the most basic home improvement, let alone entrusted to safely decommission a degraded nuclear power plant co-located with three massive high pressure gas transmission pipelines. It is imperative that the PSC set a strong precedent in overseeing nuclear decommissioning and ensuring that the process is conducted safely using best practices. To echo your own words in your 2018 letter to FERC, quote, we trust you share our concern for public safety, end quote. We urge you in the strongest possible terms 
to immediately reject the license transfer to Holtec in the best interest of New York State. Thank you for this. Thank you very much for your comment. I'm now calling John Sullivan and John Montgomery. You are on deck. Mr. Sullivan, are you available? John Sullivan, yes, yes. you're on mute. John Sullivan, can you hear me? I can. Go ahead and proceed. Sure. It's J O H N S U L L I V A N. I prepared a statement, so I will read it off. Okay. Um, Holtec is uniquely unqualified for decommissioning Indian Point. Decommissioning is more than a demolition job. It involves gathering up and isolating poisonous materials from the larger environment. Radionuclides are life threatening for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands of years. Not all of them are easily isolated from the environment. We as a nation have not yet begun to calculate the cost of storage. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Mr. Sullivan. Excuse me. I'm, I apologize for interrupting you, but you yeah. are going in and out. So part part of your comment we can hear, but part we cannot. And I think the court reporter was actually jumped me. So can you um, create a you know, better speaker situation so we can hear you more clearly? Can you hear me clearly now? I can. Okay. I, I may have been talking. I have the mic speak pointed more at myself now. So I'll try again, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I'll begin you again. To, yeah, you don't, you don't have to start over. I would just start with the you know, second of the last sentence. Okay. So we as a nation have not yet begun to calculate the cost of storage, but the cost of decommissioning itself can be monumental. All decommissioning companies have an incentive to decommission a site economically so as to make a profit from collecting the balance of the decommissioning fund. By doing so, and by assuring that a site is clean, correct- State grant money for any infrastructure improvement project, any uh, water quality project, any project such as cleanup of 1,4-dioxane or any previous contaminant, well, in that sense, the state should come forward for these 125,000 residents and help through grant money offset the costs of an acquisition. Now, you have to look at, Mr. Lansman, a offer of $607 million by Liberty for New York American Water. I would, I would suggest that it's all feigned. It's, it's a fake in the sense that New York American Water, who was given this license to print money on ratepayers' backs, overplayed its hand and realized that at some point, the Public Service Commission has to wake up and say, this is just wrong. What better way to protect themselves than to have an acquisition, which has nothing to do with assets, has to do with stock. The assets of New York American Water, as Mr. Kennedy stated, has been paid through surcharges on infrastructure improvement projects that have come with added profit to the company, whether it's always to the same contractor or not. It's always 100% of costs plus 12 to 20% profit. So we, the ratepayers, have paid for every single asset that New York American Water doesn't even claim it owns. It, it, but would be part of any kind of a sale or any kind of a public acquisition. That's first, but more important, 125,000 people deserve the same service as the other 1.2 million. That is that a basic necessity water should be delivered by a public entity tax free. The fact that it hasn't been done for so long, I, I have to disagree with anyone who says, well, government needs to get the tax money from the state. Government needs to, to share that tax money over every other resident that hasn't paid it all along. 
And any study, the feasibility studies out there by Seacliff, by Massapequa, and by the town of Hempstead shows that any increase in tax to cover is more than compensated by taking the profit and the unfairness out of this picture. So you really have a great job here, and I thank you so much, Mr. Lansman, for what you're doing and these hearings. But the answer is easy. Equity, fairness, constitutionality, everyone deserves public water. And it's the best interests of the public at mind. And whether it's, as Mr. Kennedy says, local control for the North Shore, local control for Massapequa, local control for Hempstead, or a Nassau County Water Authority, the bottom line is the answer is public water for all. And I've only seen one hero in all of this, and that's been the Massapequa Water District, who's looked at it, studied it, saw the feasibility, and are willing to take on the job. You have other public entities that have seen the feasibility and deny, deny the conclusions of their own study. Let the state not do it because the governor is onto something here, and that is that study what these assets really are, and if we have to threaten eminent domain, it's enough. Some foreign conglomerate should no longer be profiteering through water at our expense. We need public water. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could you uh, just uh, spell your name for the record? Because um, it was uh, Claudia who had signed up, and a court reporter needs to, to keep the record uh, clean. So the first name is uh, Dave. First name's Dave, D-A-V-E. Last name is Denenberg, D as in Dave, E-N, E-N, B as in boy, E-R-G. Terrific. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you both. Um, our next speaker uh, is Dan uh, Mackery. Uh, Dan, if you're there, please hit star three, and we will try to bring you into the into the oh, meeting or... or Raise your hand. Listen to it. Dan? Okay, while we figure out if Dan is on, um, we're going to have Lloyd uh, Nadel and Arthur Edelman will be next. So, uh, Dan Mackery, do we, do we have you on? Okay, uh, let's go to Lloyd Nadel. Uh, Mr. Nadel, if you're Calling in, hit star three. If you are on the video, just use the raise your hand function and we will see you. Okay, um, you hear me? Yes, we do. Welcome. Hey. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, just just actually, just to be clear, are you Mr. Nadel? It's Nadel, yes. I'm Nadel, Nadel, sorry. Great. Um, oh, there you are. And if you want us to be on the video, just hit the uh, start video function, um, but we can hear you. So. Whatever you want is fine with us. Okay, um, here we go. Start my video. Um, I think I'm on it. There um, you are. We see you. All right. <laughs> First, Mr. Lansman, I'd like to thank you for holding these hearings and for the role you've assumed at the uh, request of the governor. The United States is supposed to be a democracy. The United States Constitution applied to the states through the 14th Amendment guarantees equal protection of the laws. Unlike free competition between companies like those that provide oil, gasoline, automobiles, etc., water is a monopoly and is provided by one service. It could be a private one, as we know, or a municipal one, such as Jericho Water District, Suffolk County Water District, etc. In many areas of the country, public utilities or public entities cannot provide low cost water to its citizens, making those a good fit for private companies. That's not the case in Nassau, where in particular, there are about 20 different municipal districts providing water to more than 1 million homes and businesses, approximately 90% of the households and commercial establishments in the county. 
They provide that service at a reasonable cost with a reasonable, with superior customer service. Let's look at some reasons why public water is the better choice. In 2018, my wife and I compared our water bill at our home at 10 Wedgwood Court in Glen uh, Glenhead to our neighbor's bill down the block. We have identical size lots, houses, and water consuming amenities. His family consisted of five people, all of whom were home that year. My family consists of four people, two of whom were in college for eight months of that year. His annual water cost, which includes the taxes he pays on his property tax bill for water, approximately $500. Our cost for that year, identical house, which includes what's on the, the, the um, property tax bill, $2,500 five times as much. That is not equal protection of the laws. Why is there such a difference? The difference is pretty clear. The local water districts have headquarters in small, basic one-story buildings. There's no corporate headquarters with its real estate taxes and all its amenities. It's local structures, local control. NYAW built itself a fancy two-story brick structure in Merrick probably pays property taxes of 50 grand for that building alone. The, the parent company built itself a 10-story waterfront Taj Mahal in Camden, New Jersey, where, as I've submitted pictures on this rate proceeding to the PSC, they leave the lights on all night and all weekend. Their electric bill alone is probably $50 million. I am sure Liberty's and Algonquin's buildings in Western Canada are comparable. More importantly, however, is the payroll of the private water companies versus the public. Only private companies hire high-priced lawyers to make their cases before P the PSC. I would, I would guess that Harris Beach and Cohen and Dykeman are charging $500 an hour for their lawyers in this PSC hearing. Only private companies hire lobbyists to try to persuade the PSC, legislators, county executives, and God knows who, el who else to approve their continuing to do business in New York and to approve their astronomical rates. Only private companies hire accountants and other financial employees to create mind-boggling spreadsheets and other charts and graphs that nobody can understand. We are probably talking tens of millions of dollars a year that have nothing to do with providing clean drinking water to its ratepayers but is paid for by the ratepayers. Think how ludicrous this is. The company hires for millions and millions of dollars these professionals. They charge us the rates to cover their salaries. And the, the goal of the professionals is to raise our rates so they get more money to pay for their, to their shareholders. As you heard, their dividends, the cost of their stock, et cetera. I mean, that is one of the most ludicrous things that I can think of. Speaking of clean, clean drinking water, as you know, New York State has strict guidelines to remove the contaminants. Public drink districts are going to get aid from the state and have been getting aid from the state. Private companies, none. Our district recently constructed two new towers and a new filtration system at NYU's blow, NYAW's bloated cost for these projects at about $15 million, all borne by the ratepayers. And we, uh, we applaud Governor Cuomo's suggestion that these assets are ours. And if the system is sold to a public company, we should not be paying for these systems again, these assets again. Providing water is not a difficult undertaking on Long Island. We don't have to pipe water from upstate reservoirs like the city. We don't have to run thousands of miles of pipes from mountains to deserts like they do in California. We do not need state-of-the-art desalinization plants. All we have to do is drill up water from the aquifers that run under Long Island, remove the contaminants, and pipe it out to the customers. Public companies have been doing this for 200 years without any major problems. <clears throat> now, other reasons why their rates are ridiculously high, in addition to the payroll, are that the, their tiered rates are narrow, 
and jump up from basic water to, if you use a little more than the basic water consumption, very, very quickly, unlike the pr public companies. And most significantly, as you've heard from Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Denenberg, and others, is their 9.75% baseline profit. That's not just profit on the water, but profit on anything they do. Profit when they build the water tanks, the purification system, the pipes in the grounds, the fire hydrants. Think about it, a 500 piece of equipment costs the rate payer almost 600. A 10,000 piece, piece of equipment is gonna cost an extra almost $1,000. And as you've also heard, you can bet they're not shop, shopping for the cheapest piece of equipment. And as proof of all this is, again, you've heard their stock in four years has appreciated close to 500%. There are three feasibility studies showing that public provision, providing of the water will save the ratepayers' money. The public, whom the Public Service Commission is mandated to pre tech will be better and less expensively serviced by denying this sale. That's why Governor Cuomo has ordered this investigation to determine this. He has seen our bills. He has heard the lies by the private water executives at the last rate hearing. He is aware of the legislation introduced, and he is pushing along with all the rest of us to have a, pri a pr public North Shore Water Authority to take over these assets. In short, there is no logical reason to authorize the petitioner's application in this proceeding unless you are a shareholder in one of these monopoly companies. It is certainly not in the best interest of the public to continue being hosed by a private water provider regardless of the name. And I hope that, uh, Mr. Lansman, you, based on your investigation here, authorize or recommend to the PSC and to the government that we finally get our own public water authority. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate your, uh, your testimony. Thank you. Um, next, special counsel Langman. Yes. Uh, can I just ask um, Mr. Nadell uh, a question, if you don't mind? Oh, sure, Commissioner Edwards. Okay. Okay, th Mr. Uh, Nadell, is yes. your uh, you spoke about your wife? Is that Agatha Nadell by any chance? Yes, it is, and she is waiting to speak soon. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, she is. Okay. All right. Yes, so then I will wait to say hello to her. Okay. You hear the first person that brought that brought my attention to this issue, and I was going to tell you to send uh, her uh, my best wishes. So I will wait to hear from her. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good evening. You're quite welcome. Well, you know, our our order of speakers isn't set in in stone or 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 you know prescribed by any law or rule. So um, if uh, Mrs. Nadell uh, is ready to to, to speak by all means, um, she's welcome to, to go now. I don't mean to put her on the spot, but. Oh, I think we lost them. Listen, okay. can, you hear me? can you hear me okay? Yes, who's this? This is Agatha Nadell. Oh, okay, yes, so so welcome by, uh, by, by, by special uh, request of commission. Um, I just wanna make sure Mary, Inoui is uh, if you are participating by phone, please press star three so we can recognize you and call you next. I'm calling Marie in Sarah. Marie and Sarah, I think you're available. Actually, I thought you were here, but I don't see you. So you as well, if you're a call in user, please press star three and we will be able to find you and unmute your line. I'm next calling Mary Finneran. I will get back to Mary Inouye and Marie and Sarah, but right now I'm calling Mary Finneran and on deck is Matt Sultan. Matt, you're on deck. Mary Finneran. 
Hi, um, I'm Mary Finneran, F-I-N-N-E-R-A-N. -N -E I live in Cairo, New York. I have lived in New York State my entire life. Um, I have a couple of things to address. First, I would like to say that it is a deep concern to me that the AIM pipeline runs so close to the power section that that the area of Indian Point that, that powers the cooling tanks. Um, and a blast from this would be devastating. And I agree with others that the pipeline needs to be shut down during the decommissioning. I'd actually like to see the pipeline shut down permanently, but that's another matter. Um, the NRC did find uh, a, a couple of things about Holtec, or one little thing is the NRC found a failure to establish design control, control measures for the Holtec casks that were used for an interim storage um, at the Yankee decommissioning. Um, they were deemed potentially safety significant, the design control measures violation, and the NRC considered a fine but of $36,000, but they de decided against it because Holtec did correct the violation. However, it took great diligence to catch the, the, the casks um, failures. Um, I also want to mention about where the, the waste would be going, that the whole tech is des designing the waste facility down in New Mexico. And um, the governor of New Mexico is against it, the vast about the waste facility. The, um, there's, um, let me find the, Hold on two seconds, please. Um, Democratic Congresswoman Deb Haaland uh, opposes, who is the Secretary of Interior nominee, opposes the plan. Um, more than a dozen state legislators, and also notably Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott um, denounced the whole tech project due to its its proximity to oil oil fields where there is fracking and a, a lot of, you know, um, ground shaking, shall we say. Um, I, I, I want to note too that the hearings for the, the, the whole tech um, waste facility down in New Mexico kind of in a way parallels what is going on here. It was a hearing that was only available to people who had easy online um, notification um, and can speak online as I am doing. Um, people who require their libraries or other places may not be able to be to make to have their statements heard. Um, and I find that to be a problem where the, the public needs to be able to be heard, all the public who might be influenced. Um, I also want to say I was a welder for years and I am a um, I have been a union worker my entire life, um, and I commend union people, but I think that that is um, something that we need to make sure that we're very diligent and vigilant regarding cleaning up this site. And um, I ask you to deny this license to Holtec. Thank you. Thank you. I call Matt Salton and Mike Hemsky. You are on deck. Matt Salton, Mr. Salton. I see you not unmuted yet. Hold on. Uh, could you unmute Mr. Salton's line? Mr. White? Yes, Your Honor. I, I apologize. I'm work I was working on getting his name to come up. Sorry about that. There we are. I apologize. I was going under Matthew and I apologize. Go Thank ahead. you very much. Mr. Salton, your line's been unmuted. Please proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Matt Salton, M-A-T-T-S-A-L-T-O-N. I'm the Environmental Action Associate of Hudson River Sloop Clearwater. I live in Northern Westchester. So we feel that Indian Point is the great albatross around our collective neck and Holtec is ill-equipped to matter so paramount. There are companies able to take on the decommissioning process. 
companies without the history of malfeasance that Holtec is plagued with. There are other options, energy solutions and Aurero are two such options. We employ use its authority to choose a better path. At this moment, we must decommission a nuclear plant. With it is the potential to do unnecessary harm to the New York metropolitan area and its 18.5 million inhabitants. It should be noted for the record that Holtec has never completed a nuclear decommissioning project. Their current model of fleet decommissioning is just starting. Its first undertaking is Oyster Creek, which it acquired in July 2019. And its entire nuclear fleet was acquired less than a year ago. While Holtec has never completed the decommissioning of a nuclear plant before, they have a history of mishandling nuclear waste and hiding safety violations. In March 2019, the NRC recommended that Holtec be fined $116,000 for nearly dropping a canister loaded with nuclear down 18 feet. They failed to mention any of the issues they'd faced with waste storage to the public when meeting with the village of Buchanan. The ratepayers have endowed the decommissioning trust fund to be used so that decommissioning would be done in safety and austerity. Holtec has a record of adhering to neither. We would like to wrap up decommissioning quickly and pretend that we can make the site suitable for a park by the 2030s, but this is simply not the reality. There are those who are as, acting as though the same quality of war result, regardless of how long it takes or who does it. There is no way to safely transport to spend fuel and there is nowhere to send it. If we put this radioactive fuel on the roads or on the rails or on the rivers, then every community passes risk without a transportation plan and no place to put it, then the fuel will be remaining on site indefinitely. Holtec does not have a plan to handle this. New Yorkers should not be left responsible for the cleanup of Indian Point if Holtec's precarious scheme fails. If they run out of money before decommissioning is finished, then it will be the public who has to turn out their pockets. Issue of the Hudson Valley for the next half century or more. Let us look back and know that we did all we could to maximize safety and minimize regret. Given their lack of experience, lack of plan, and general incompetence, we believe this commission should deny the license transfer. This is decommissioning a nuclear power plant and there are no second chances. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike Kemsky is next and Nicholas Nasir, you are on deck. Mr. Kemsky, Mike Kemsky, you are yes, unmuted evening. and go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Kemsky, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-K-E-M-P-S-K-I. I currently work for Entergy Indian Point and will be transitioning to Holtec CDI. Uh, I'm a resident of Cortland Manor. I've been in the area for uh, near 20 years. I have three children who've uh, worked their way through the Henrik Hutchinson School District. So uh, the charter uh, at Indian Point of protecting the health and safety of the public resonates with me, considering that my uh, my family is just miles down the road, and I've made, made many friends and have family in the area. I've worked at Indian Point in, for over 20 years in various capacities, including engineering and maintenance. I'm currently the maintenance manager at Indian Point and will be transitioning to become the maintenance manager with uh, Holtec CDI. I like to lay testament to the nuclear professionals at Indian Point. Uh, their charter of protecting the health and safety of the public has been paramount, paramount has been central to their safety culture. Um, but again, with this professionalism, what they do every day, what they bring to the table to ensure safe operation of Indian Point, and as it's improved over the years, has been incredible. And in spite of the announcement a little over four and a half years ago, that professionalism sustained and is right now indicative in terms of Indian Point being one of the top performing plants in the nuclear industry. And when I talk about top performing, I'm specifically talking about the health and safety of the public and how they approach their work. As I mentioned, I'll be transitioning to Holtec with the complement of near 300 people of these same professionals. I put my trust in these professionals because as I mentioned earlier, my family is right down the road in the, in the school district. And again, it resonates with me, the health and safety. There have been uh, forums identifying disparaging comments with regard to Holtec, in particular with the Tennessee Valley Authority. 
I'd like to offer you this with regard to our interface with Holtec over the past decade. Um, over the transition period identified, they've come with a comprehensive plan in terms of how they plan to approach decommissioning. With regard to fuel storage over the past decade, our interface with Holtec has been nothing but professional, and they supply fuel storage vessels and transportation mechanisms that are engineered and constructed to the highest of standards. And with that, I'd like to offer you this, that the nuclear professionals, the 300 that I mentioned, intend to operate all through May when we shut down the nuclear reactor, excellence in nuclear performance and health and safety, and those same 300 individuals will continue to operate with Holtec in the safety commissioning of the Indian Point site. I appreciate your time, and you all have a great evening. Thank you very much for your comment. I'm going to call Nicholas Nasir, N-A-S-I-R, and Nevo Robito, you are on deck. Mr. Nasir, I don't see you signed up as an electronic access. If you are a call-in user, pre please press star three on your phone so we can recognize you. In the meantime, I'm gonna call Nicholas Nasir. Mr. Nasir, are you available? And if you're a call-in user, please press star three. Not seeing a call in user with a hand up. I'm going to call Peter Wolf and Rodney Richer. You are on deck. Peter Wolf. If you are a call in user, please press star three. Okay, going on to Rodney Richer. Mr. Richer. I do see you. Well, can you hear me now? Your line, yes, your line is now unmuted. Please proceed. Thank you. My name is Rodney Richer, R-O-D-N-E-Y, Richer, R-I-C-H-E-R. I'm representing the Eastern Millwright Regional Council. Uh, we are a trade organization of the Millwright Professional Trade that have years of exposure in the nuclear industry in New York State. We currently have uh, two units uh, currently under the supervision of Holtec in our geographical area of coverage. Those are Pilgrim Nuclear Station in Massachusetts and Oyster Creek in New Jersey. Both of these projects to this date are on time and on budget. Holtec will utilize local labor with skills from many of the union trades that provide professional expertise for a safe and efficient decommission of Indian Point. Also, much of the employment fulfilled through Holtec will involve many of the employees of Entergy and the nuclear professionals you're hearing about. The NRC has vetted Holtec and, and determined that Holtec has the financial and technical expertise required for the safety commission of this facility. I would like to ask the Public Service Commission on behalf of myself and the members we represent in the millwright industry trade to approve the agreement between Entergy and Holtec. It means jobs, a repurposed and reusable site that generates tax revenue sooner and a positive impact on New York and the local community. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to let a couple of the, the folks um, that I already called no, I, I see that you are now participating and available. Unfortunately, um, time would not allow us to wait for you, but I will circle back and attempt to um, reach you uh, once we're finished with the other speakers. So hang tight. I think that is um, Marie and Sarah and I want to say Miss Scott, Scoptic, Catherine Scopic. So I'll circle back and, and get to you, um, uh, time providing. I'd now like to call uh, Sean Weckman. Sean Weckman, if you are a, yeah, I see you. Um, your line will be uh, unmuted momentarily. Okay, you're unmuted. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Weckman, that's S-E-A-N-W-E-C-K-E-M-A-N. 
I am a union carpenter and a member of local 279 since 2003. And I've worked at Indian Point since uh, 2009 up until this past 2020 in June when they pushed all the contractors out the door. <clears throat> the transfer of Indian Point's license to Holtec will provide union jobs to the hardworking men and women of the Hudson Valley. I believe Holtec's agreement with the local unions uh, with their skilled labor will allow for the safe and secure decommission of Indian Point. And it's for this reason that I asked the Public Service Commission to approve the agreement between Holtec and Entergy. Thank you. Thank you. I now call um, Susan Gillespie and Tina Voles von Garbes. You are on deck. Susan Gillespie. Don't, if you are a call-in user, please use star three on your telephone. Not seeing it. Okay, let's go with Tina. Ms. Voles. See you. you hear me? Yes, you are unmuted. Please proceed. Ah, great. Um, my name is uh, Christina, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A, and my last name is Voles Bongar. B, uh, it's V-O-L-Z hyphen B-O-N-G-A-R. And I live in Peekskill, New York. And I can see the plant from my second floor and attic office. And uh, my 98-year-old mother lives here in Peekskill too. And she lives five blocks away from me and has a better view of Indian Point. So why am I bringing her up? Um, because I'm responsible for her safety in an emergency. So I need to have an emergency response plan in place. Uh, just like the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the PSC and Entergy, and now Holtec. Um, the high pressure aim gas pipeline is 1200 feet from the backup generators at Indian Point. Currently, the emergency response to a gas pipeline emergency contradicts that of a nuclear uh, accident with radioactive materials. One is to, you know, shelter in place because of the high incidence of explosions and fire. Uh, the latter is to evacuate. You basically hear the sirens, you know, grab our Indian point evacuation booklet which tells us to take our iodine pills and go wait at the Indian Point evacuation bus stop. So I just want um, to make sure too that I'm making this statement as a point of public record that the PSC under its jurisdiction from FIMSA, you know, which is the uh, federal agency, the Pipeline Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, uh, which is under the DOT, is now responsible for the safe operation and administration of the AIM pipeline. So your honor, I'm, I'm asking who is responsible for making sure there is an adequate emergency response plan in place? The NRC, the PSC, Entergy, or Holtec? It needs to address all of the risks of the pipeline and safely storing over 2000 tons of radioactive waste. Turning off the gas is the, one of the first steps and that's what the New York State uh, risk assessment uh, recommends. Uh, the one that they sent to FERC that somebody mentioned earlier in the public comments. The NRC has failed our community when they failed to do the proper risk assessment as the NRC's OIG report pointed out this year. Um, and apparently in its decommissioning underway in Oyster Creek, Holtec has refused more funding for its first responder training. And apparently there's some union issue, you know, paying the union workers. So, um, and there was another speaker on who was listing the prob problems with Pilgrim from Holtec. Um, and Holtec could certainly cause these safety problems. And 
you know, does does the PSC really want to assume liability for Holtec's poor safety record? You know, now that we're making this a point of public record, will the PSC be responsible for you know transferring um, the you know the making the the, uh, the license, the operating license? So our non-emergency response plans are literally a disaster here. The PSC should reject in whole, so without any conditions, this court action, action that's proposed by Holtec. They're clearly unfit to hold the license of decommissioning simply financially, as the New York AG um, has pointed out in its petition, um, you know, challenging this financial shell game of Holtec. So here's my great worry as a community person that Holtep is really making this up as it goes along in this process. And it's obviously a uh, Holtec is avoiding uh, along with the NRC having a public hearing so we can make the record of Hulk, Holtec, you know, a public point. So that should tell, uh, you know, that should say everything right there. So uh, you know, and I've attended their public meetings and presentation uh, and at the PSDAR, they didn't even mention the pipeline. And at the end of the presentation, the representative said, what pipeline? And so then the next public hearing, they said, oh, no, 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 we, oh, the pipeline, sure. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna manage that, you know? Anyway, and this is after one of their major filings of their plan to decommission. So, um, finally, I, I want to say this, that there are alternatives to whole tech and maybe that's the responsibility for the, of the PSC right now, which is to point out to Entergy, um, who is the business owner here, that there are other possible companies besides whole tech, such as Orano and energy solutions. Um, I believe somebody else made public comment. Um, it was uh, Matt. Sultan from um, Clearwater, that these are other viable companies that could do the same work. And, uh, you know, I want the site to be, uh, you know, restored and functional, but really the, the rods should be stored on site and they should be stored safely. And there should be an accountability of oversight. And the disturbing thing here is that Holtec is you know, in charge of its own business model of, you know, of supplying its own casks and then, um, you know, counting on its safety. So a lot of us in the community have real concerns about oversight um, and it is very unclear, very opaque how important elements of this decommissioning are going to be done, such as the emergency response plan that we need with the gas pipeline and over 2000 tons of radioactive waste. You know, it's not simply a couple of fuel rods we're talking. We're talking about a lot of radioactive waste that we live next to. So, Your Honor, I hope that the PSC will do the right thing, take all of its jurisdiction and authority, and refuse this, uh, you know, petition and order or request um, by Holtec. Thank you, Vanessa Agu Agudello. Vanessa Agudello, I see you. Wait momentarily, and your line will be unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Please proceed. Yes, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Vanessa Gudello, and I'm a Peekskill City Council member. And I am here to urge the Public Service Commission to use their jurisdiction to deny this license transfer from Entergy to Holtec and work to address the serious concerns brought forth by community members, environmental organizations, and several elected representatives in various levels of government. 
Now, as a, a elected representative of Peekskill, a city that has been designated an environmental justice community by the Department of Environmental Conversation, we know exactly what it's like to have to bear the disproportionate burden and disproportionate risk of having volatile infrastructure such, such as that of fossil fuel or nuclear energy right in our backyard. In fact, uh, we are lucky enough to have both of those uh, infrastructures um, in our area, and I mean that sarcastically. Yet, uh, Holtec has failed to mention uh, or to make mention of the fact that these two 42 inch natural gas pipelines sit right adjacent to the nuclear uh, to Indian Point nuclear power plant, and they have failed to make mention of this in their preliminary commissioning plan. Uh, to me, that speaks to the lack of priority that Holtec as a company has um, in prioritizing the safety and health of our communities. And I think that today um, and, and, and the several meetings that have taken place for the last uh, several months have really uh, show that community members are deeply, deeply concerned that Holtec is, is not a company that can be trusted with this decommissioning process. Um, now, there's been a number of uh, instances that have been brought up today um, and have been brought up in the past that really serve as evidence uh, that Holtec has had uh, a, a, a has had a track record of uh, and, and well documented history of bribery, corruption, malfeasance. Um, we have seen that there uh, that they have also uh, not attempted to mitigate the risks that exist when uh, planning such a decommissioning process um, in other areas of the country. And I think that. Uh, the, the Public Service Commission right now is in a position to really uh, answer the question as to whether we as a community, as government, uh, governmental agencies, are here to prioritize the uh, health and safety of our communities, or are we here to prior prioritize a decommissioning scenario uh, that is quick, that is cheap, that cuts corners in order to get us uh, to a place uh, where this can this uh, site can be made available for development as soon as possible, and to me um, that question is is uh, not hard to answer. As as someone serving a community who has been uh, again disproportionately burdened uh, by these environmental impacts, uh, by these risks, I think it's safe to say that we need to listen to the concerns being voiced by our community members. Uh, it is unnecessary for us to put these com our, our communities at risk um, by entering into this risky business with whole tech. I think we need to look into other options. Um, and, and I think that a lot of the concerns that have been brought up today, even by those who have uh, been supportive of this license transfer, are concerns that can also be addressed by other entities that can possibly take on this decommissioning. You know, we believe in uh, in in, in uh, having uh, hiring labor that gets paid a prevailing wage, that is trained, um, that is able to have uh, a secure job security and, and provide a livelihood for their families. Um, we we believe that uh, non not for profit organizations that are in many ways serving our communities in in their own. Um, with with their own unique expertise, uh, should have the funding to continue to provide those services and, and continue to to bridge those gaps that that seem to exist in our community. But those things should not be done on the backs of the people who will have to face the risks of of a decommissioning process um, when things go terribly wrong. Um, and and thinking back to what we've seen happen in Texas. Uh, with how unprepared uh, the 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 infrastructure, um, how unprepared they were to address uh, the changes that we're seeing in our climate, it, it leads me to believe that we need to plan um, to be overly prepared to ensure that this decommissioning process is done as safely as possible and with the community's safety in mind. Uh, so I do hope that the Public Service Commission will consider these concerns that will take them seriously. 
uh, that will consider the fact that a number of our uh, federal uh, elected official, officials, such as Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, Attorney General T Tish James, have, uh, who has now filed a lawsuit because there has not been a public hearing um, convened by the NRC uh, to address these concerns, that we need to slow this process down and really take a look at the, uh, the evidence that is being brought forth um, by our community members and, and really question ourselves as to whether this is the best possible option for this site. I, from what I've seen so far, what has been brought to me so far, what I've heard from our community so far, what I'm hearing is, is that this isn't the best possible solution. It's not the safest possible solution and that there are other options. So I, I wanna urge the PSC um, to work to ensure that these concerns are addressed and to work to concern that the entity taking over this licensing agreement is one that can be trusted, one that has financial stability, one that is willing and committed to using equipment that is trusted, um, that, has, that, ha that has been uh, used and trusted by other uh, entities who have gone through decommissioning, successfully gone through decommissioning process, uh, the decommissioning process to ensure that our community safety is centered here and to ensure that we do not have to face uh, an unnecessary burden or an unnecessary risk of, of what could possibly go wrong um, if if we are to uh, continue with an organize with a with a corporation who is willing to cut the corners in order to make this um, as cheap and as quick of a process as possible. Uh, so thank, thank you. you all so much for your time. Thank you. Um, I'm calling uh, Victoria Lung. And Stephen Kent, you are on deck. Ms. Lung, Victoria Lung. Momentarily, your line will be unmuted. You can hear me now? Yes. Great. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Victoria Lung. It's V I C T O R I A L E U N G. I'm an associate staff attorney with Riverkeeper. Riverkeeper has been working with state advocates and community members for decades on Indian Point issues, and we are a signatory to a 2017 Indian Point closure agreement with New York State and Entergy. In addition to this oral testimony, we will be submitting written testimony to supplement our previous written comments. With the imminent closure of Indian Point Unit 3 in April, this is the last step towards the safe, efficient, restoration of the site to productive use. But this process has the potential to impact the surrounding environment and communities for decades, so strict oversight is needed. The PSC must exercise its jurisdiction over this transfer and throughout the decommissioning and site restoration process under state law as outlined in our written comments. Excuse me, Ms. Long, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Mr. White, would you please mute Mr. Ms. Agudello? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. I apologize, Ms. Long. Please proceed. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, no problem. Um, the commission should also deny the proposed license transfer. Holtec is wholly unfit to hold Indian Points license with no prior experience fully decommissioning a nuclear power plant, and it has a history of lies, bribes, and risk taking. For example, in the past, Holtec was found to have bribed a federal official and was debarred from federal contracting. It then lied about this incident on its application for tax breaks and then had the audacity to challenge the suspension of the tax breaks once its deception was discovered. Holtec is a company that is completely profit driven and self interested, and it cannot be trusted to handle the complex and expensive decommissioning process which, if not fully completed, risks the health of the Hudson River and the surrounding communities. And also risks the loss of the $2 billion in the trust fund made up of ratepayer money. Holtec's cost estimate is questionably optimistic and has been completely untested because it has no experience decommissioning a site. If the trust fund runs out of money, the state will be left responsible for funding and completing the job. In conclusion, 
After many years of work, New York is finally about to eliminate the risk and harms from Indian Point's operation. But we cannot let this effort come undone in this last stage by handing Indian Point over to an untrustworthy company such as Holtec. The commission must reject the license transfer or at the very least impose the most stringent conditions possible on the transfer to protect the interests of New Yorkers. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. And Stephen Kent, I call Stephen Kent and Vincent Albanese, you are on deck. Stephen Kent, your line will be unmuted momentarily. Hey there, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hi, my name's Stephen Kent, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-K-E-N-T. -E -E uh, I live in Dutchess County. I've been in the Hudson Valley most of my life. Uh, my home's in Garrison, not far from the plant. The PSC should affirm rather than disclaim jurisdiction over license transfer and use it to reject Holtec as Indian Point's licensee because it's unqualified and utterly untrustworthy. And, and by the way, let's not insult the physician who said earlier there's no safe dose of radiation by talking about natural background radiation or claiming that fossil fuel pollution is deadly and nuclear plant emissions are not. That's just spin. Man-made isotopes are different from naturally occurring isotopes. We've we've adapted to, and they do cause health damage, and the people who say otherwise know that. Indian Point's tritium is leaking into the groundwater and the Hudson, and it's dangerous, and so is the strontium-90, which is also leaking from Indian Point, and that's lethal. This kind of mendacious spin is an illustration of the danger that we're all in because Holtec and its allies are vigorously engaging in it to acquire Indian Point. But here are some facts that can't be spun away. Holtec and its partner company, SNC Lavalin, have a long documented record of recurrent bribery, fraud, lying to officials, and malfeasance. Holtec is under criminal investigation in New Jersey. It can't be trusted, and I think it would be regulatory malpractice to trust it. Holtec does indeed lack expertise in nuclear plant decommissioning and is learning on the job as it acquires closed nuclear plants. To allay that objection, they hired staff from other companies that have some experience, but that is definitely not the same thing. They have entered into fast the fast decommissioning market because it's lucrative. Their approach involves cutting costs and corners, seeking and getting a raft of exemptions from NRC regulations, including on how much radiation workers can be exposed to. It hired non-union unskilled workers for safety critical jobs like pipe fitting to save money at Oyster Creek, as we heard. It tried to build there without a permit. Then when Lacey Township complained about that, it sued the town to evade local authority. As it was mentioned earlier, it nearly dropped the spent fuel canister at San Onofre, which would have released a, a serious amount of radiation. The incident was hushed up. It only came to light thanks to a whistleblower. Holtec lacks financial assurance to do this job, and its business model relies solely on leveraging ratepayer and taxpayer money, our money. Since it would bring none of its own money to decommissioning Indian Point, there is significant danger that it could deplete the decommissioning trust fund, leave de decommissioning half done, and walk away, leaving New York to bear the costs and risks of dealing with a contaminated site. Its leveraged subsidiary structure is designed to shield it from liability and put all the liability on the state and on residents. Holtec will double dip and reimburse itself for spent fuel management, not once, but twice. First, by, by tapping the DTF for non-decommissioning purposes, which could deplete it for actual decommissioning tasks, and, and the second time by suing the DOE to recover uh, the spent fuel management costs. Unlike other companies, it would pocket that windfall amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars instead of putting it back into the decommissioning trust fund. Holtec's PSDAR, its uh, post shutdown activities report, indicates a reckless, unsafe, compressed timeline for transferring spent fuel from the fuel pools to dry storage, cutting it down to three years or less. Five years is the standard for ordinary spent fuel. Seven years or more are needed for high burn-up fuel, which is about 60% of Indian Point's spent fuel inventory. Rushing this process may cut costs, but it puts workers and residents at risk, just like Holtec did at San Onofre. It, Holtec reserves the right to ship large radioactive components, which is what it mentioned in its PSDAR, and that could likely include spent fuel canisters, down the Hudson by barge, which is unacceptably dangerous. Holtec lacks the basic qualifications or trustworthiness to make decisions about rad waste transport versus on-site storage responsibly. Holtec's aggressive vertical integration model promotes self-dealing and self-interested decisions that put profits ahead of public health and safety. Its consolidated interim storage project in New Mexico would embroil Indian Port 
Indian Point in a spent fuel transport scheme that accelerates dry transfer to dry storage dangerously here and poses radiological risks along the transport routes and violates consent-based siting and environmental just justice principles as well as the Nuclear Waste Policy Act. Holtec's small modular reactor business raises the prospect of re-enriching and reprocessing Indian Point spent fuel on the back end for use in Holtex SMRs and even potentially in the weapons industry. And this is a dirty, dangerous process that vi violates fundamental principles that govern the nuclear fuel cycle. SMRs are not, as Holtec claims, walk, walk away safe. They pose many unresolved risks and dangers. Holtec recently announced it wants to install one of its SMRs at the Oyster Creek plant. Indian Point could be next. This could be part of the value that Holtec sees in acquiring closed nuclear plants sitting atop large transmission lines to major electricity markets. But renuclearizing closed nuclear plants conflicts fundamentally with the mission of decommissioning and remediating nuclear sites for non-nuclear uses. Holtec's canister and dry storage system for spent fuel, which it would insist on using at Indian Point, is deeply flawed. It has been plagued by quality assur assurance failures, unauthorized design changes, gouging, and other problems. It is inadequate to keep Indian Point spent fuel safe. Much better systems exist and are available in the, in the U.S. nuclear industry, and Indian Point should use them. It's not as if there aren't better candidates who could decommission Indian Point quickly, or that if Holtec is rejected, that we're stuck with safe store and a cleanup process that takes 60 years. That's a false spin, and those who allege it know that it's false. You don't need to accept Holtec as the licensee to support fast decommissioning. Other specialized decommissioning companies aren't like Holtec. They aren't scofflaws. They don't lack experience. They have better dry storage systems. They don't denigrate and dismiss citizen input and concerns. Uh, they don't have SMRs and other dangerous lines of business that would pose conflicts of interests. They wouldn't pocket the spent fuel management funds they recover from DOE. And they haven't drawn the ire of so many state and federal officials the way Holtec has. New York can and must do better than Holtec. It would be a bold move for the PSC to deny license transfer, but that's what this situation demands. And the rest of the country is watching Indian Point as a test case. 20 million people live in a 50 mile radius. There's $2.3 billion in the decommissioning trust fund, the largest in the country. What you do hear about license transfer is critically important for New York and for the country. The NRC dismissed New York's concerns about Holtec without so much as a hearing, and therefore, it is completely appropriate and necessary that the PSC should take those concerns up. The principle of federal preemption does not mean that the PSC should relinquish its jurisdiction and its duty to protect New York. I urge you to reject license transfer to whole text. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm calling Vincent Albanese and on deck is Zachary Middleton. Mr. Albanese, I see you at, uh, you are now unmuted. Please proceed. Thank you. My name is Vincent Albanese and I'm speaking on behalf of the Laborers International Union of North America. We represent over 40,000 men and women in the state of New York and over 500,000 members nationwide. We fully support unequivocally the sale of Indian Point to Holtec. Our support for this sale and decommissioning is rooted not just in the jobs it will provide members of the laborers union, but our members live and comprise the community around Indian Point. We are not some outside entity that is coming into Indian Point to work and leave. Our members will remain here as they have in the past to coach little leagues, watch your children's, their, their children grow and participate in all the things that make up community. The notion that we would allow our trained members to participate in what is being deemed a hazardous and irresponsible project is plainly insulting to us. Our members are not only highly trained and highly skilled, but we perform this work all over the country, often without any incident. And we have no reason to believe that this decommissioning will be anything different. We do not lack expertise in this. We are experts in this. Hundreds of jobs will be created for over a decade. These are good union, middle-class, family-sustaining jobs. Many of those jobs were jobs that our members did 
will be lost as we take offline completely Indian point. The opportunity for the next decade plus to at least have hundreds of these jobs still preserved and be allow our members and members of other unions to continue to work at this facility is absolutely necessary. Thank you for your time. Sir, could you please uh, spell your name for the record, please? B-I-N-C-E-N-T, last name Albanese, A-L-B-A-N-E-S-E. -E. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Albanese. And I just want to remind everyone to please state and then spell your name for our uh, diligent court reporter. Um, Zachary Middleton, I am calling uh, next, and Tatiana Komen is on deck. Mr. Middleton, you'll be unmuted momentarily. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, um, Ms. Uh, Mr. White, can you mute Mr. Albanese? Okay, Mr. Middleton, please proceed. Yes, good evening. My name is Zachary Middleton. It's spelled Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y, last name Middleton, M-I-D-D-L-E-T-O-N. I am a member of New York local Union 1163, and a regional director for the Eastern Millwright Regional Council. We represent over 4,000 union millwrights, and I'm here today to urge this commission to approve the transfer from Entergy to Holtec for the decommissioning of Indian Point. I'm a resident of New York State, and I support Holtec's capacity to decommission the nuclear site in just the 12 to 15 years. Decommissioning Indian Point in the fraction of the time means land can be repurposed and the replacement of tax revenue will come back to the region's decades sooner. Entergy's original plan is to wait, which will make costs grow and cost economic growth for the local area. Whole Tech will offer employment to more than 300 current Indian Point employees. Whole Tech has agreements with local building trades craftsmen that are local safe ember many a few people have mentioned it already new york american water misstated its asset values when it first reported to the new york state office of real property services about what it owns in my water district look at the psc record and the shameful conduct by new york american water and as my astute governor cuomo asked what does new york american water really own the record's clear they overvalued their assets, they got caught, there was an outcry for criminal charges and refunds. Now's the time to rectify these past wrongdoings, make decisions that are right for the ratepayer, right for Nassau County, right for the state, right for our state-owned water. Please work hard and quickly. Make sure we buy out New York American water at a fair price and please help us pay. We've already paid enough. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, could you just spell your name for us so the court reporter uh, gets it correctly? It's Lucinda Suarez, L-U-C-I-N-D-A Suarez, S-U-A-R-E-Z, live in Glenhead. Great, thank you very much. Um, all right, just a little, a little housekeeping to, to make it easier to, to, to wrap this up and everybody's gonna get an opportunity to speak. Um, if, if your hand is raised, please lower it so we can call on people in an orderly way. So if you have hit star three to raise your hand, hit, hit star three again um, and we'll start fresh. All right, so hopefully folks have done that. Okay, so um, Vincent Ruggiero, if you're here, hit star three, but only Vincent Ruggiero. Aaron, do we have anyone hitting anyone's hand up? 
Okay. Yes. We do. Who's hands yes. up? Um, call in user 12. I'm un going to unmute the call in user. Oh. Are they, are they um, unmuted? Pardon me for one second. Um, Xenia, you are now the host again, so you will need to do the unmuting. Xenia, you are able to hear us? Um, I think Xenia um, is not able to hear us. Um, Anna, right. can you hear us? Are you hosting? Yeah, it looks like it, it reverted to Anna. Okay. Anna, can you hear us? I can hear you, but I'm presenting, so I can't see the speakers, the list. Aaron, can you can you take over as host? Um, yes, Anna, can you change the host to me? Oh, sure. So I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. I apologize for the technical glitch. Okay, I've unmuted the call-in user. Can you please speak your name? Hello, Vincent Ruggiero here. Good evening, Mr. Ruggiero. Uh, oh, thank you, finally. Well, welcome, uh, and we hear you loud and clear, so you're up. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I I want to advocate for uh, public takeover of uh, New York American Water, uh, but I really have two questions. Uh, since the newspaper, I think it was the um, uh, the Newsday announced uh, maybe a year or so ago that our water is contaminated with uh, uh, one floor dioxin and uh, PFOAs and, and a few other little things. We've uh, discontinued drinking water from the faucet, and we're buying uh, Poland Springs water now. Uh, you know, our that that adds to our water bill. We're paying our water bill, and and we're also paying the. Uh, the Poland Springs water. So my question is, when will we be able to drink water from our faucet safely? Hello? Yes, well, is that, a, I assume that's a rhetorical question. Yeah, I, well, no, it isn't. It's really a direct question. I know that a number of speakers have alluded to it, you know, to the contamination in the water. But my question is really, is there a time, uh, you know, will we ever be able, even if we were to switch uh, to a public uh, uh, entity, does that switch the wells or do we still stay with the same well? How does that work? Well, I don't have answers for that, uh, to that for you this evening, um, and I don't want to say anything that would compromise or constrain uh, the conclusions that we're going to reach and, and present to the governor and, and, and to the public. So um, let me just say that as part of the feasibility study, um, there uh, is an examination of water safety issues and uh, part of our uh, recommendation and conclusion uh, will first and foremost consider what is the best and appropriate way to ensure water safety. If you have a particular problem with the water that you're receiving, let me urge you to contact the department separately tomorrow. I'm going to give you my email address. Email me and we'll try to address the, the, the complaint and concern that you have. I know you're asking okay. about a bigger picture, but I don't want you to leave this call. And, and figure sure. okay. out So my email address Go is ahead. Rory R O R Y R O R Y dot Lansman L A dot L A N C N T M A N 
M A N. At D P S. At what? At, at D P. D P S as in Department of Public Service. Okay, D P S. Dot N Y. Dot N Y. Dot gov. Dot gov. And if you have a particular problem with the water service that you're receiving, email me and we will try to uh, address that. Um, but we hear your concern on the bigger picture, and I assure you it's something that is uh, at the heart of the feasibility study that we're doing. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Listen, I'd like to give a shout out to Dr. Uh, to uh, Senator Gorin. He's a great, great senator. Just want to let him know that he's appreciated. All right. Well, I, if I, when I see him, I will, I will let him know he had a fan. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Right. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a good evening. You um, too. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. So we have just a couple more folks. Um, apologize to everyone for the technical glitch, uh, but we have James Plasman and Margaret Plasman. And then um, that is all that we have for registrants, but there, if there are other people on, who want to speak, we will try to get to you after the plasmin. So uh, James or Margaret, whoever wants to go first, um, hit star three on your phone or um, hit raise your hand on the, on, the, on the computer and we will call on you. You're on mute. Uh, are, are the plasmins on? Uh, yes, uh, I'll speak for myself and my wife. All right, you're welcome. Come on, you're up. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, my wife and I have been residents of the Glenhead uh, area for the last 40 years, uh, and we've lived through this uh, experience with uh, New York American water. Um, I don't think I can add any more detail to what's already been said this evening. But uh, with all the neighbors that I've been speaking with um, and ourselves, I would like to say that we all support the public takeover of North Amer uh, New York wa American water and uh, also would like to deny, would like you to deny their uh, sale to Liberty Utilities. Uh, again, thank you for the ability to speak. Thank you both very much uh, for your patience. It's been a long, it's been a long hearing. So um, that concludes the list of people who registered. But I wouldn't want anyone who's been waiting uh, to wants to speak to to not have an opportunity to speak. So if um, you uh, want to speak, uh, this is your this is your moment. So please hit um, uh, star three on your phone or hit the uh, raise your hand function on the computer and we will try to get to you. Erin, how many people do we have uh, hands raised? We have six. Okay, we think that most of them are people who've actually spoken already, but they didn't take the hand raise function off. So um, you wanna just call on them one at a time and, and we'll make sure that nobody gets missed? Yes, sir. Thank you. Colin User, you are unmuted. Hi, have you spoken? Or are you waiting to speak? Okay, let's go to the next. Mr. Versaki, you are unmuted. Hi, good evening, everyone. I appreciate the uh, hearing. Uh, thank you to the commissioners for attending and Mr. Lansman for hosting. Um, I'll keep my comments brief. My name is James Versaki. I am a resident of Seacliff, New York. I'm also a member of the North Shore Concerned Citizens Group, um, and our president, Bruce Kennedy, provided a very nice and eloquent statement earlier tonight, but I want to just provide my further support for our community's interest in obtaining public municipal water. Um, we believe that this should be done in the most efficient and uh, time time sensitive matter that it can be done, uh, particularly with the upcoming proposed sale uh, by American Water to Liberty. Uh, we believe that the any sale will severely impede our ability to obtain public water because of the increased price that they are seeking to gain. Um, I believe Agatha stated it very well earlier. 
that the governor's theory and presentation and discussion, I should say, on the fact of who actually owns these assets is of paramount importance during this process. The fact that we have paid for all of the assets in this area through rate increases and through our bills, it should be strongly considered uh, when evaluating the necessity and or any approval of any potential sale. That being said, uh, myself, my family members who live in both in Seacliff and Glenhead strongly oppose uh, the continued private ownership of our water supply. We ask the commission to consider all of our support for municipal water, uh, and I will reserve any future comments and written statements in the interest of time. But again, thank you for hosting these hearings, uh, Mr. Lansman, and to the commissioners. I'm sorry, I said words, and I can't see the name of the other commissioner. I believe it's Ms. Berman, but thank you very much for your time tonight. There we go. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, Jim, can you just spell your last name for the for the court reporter? Versaki, V is in Victor, E R, S is in Sam, O C K I. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Aaron, let's uh, go to the next raised hand and, and see if they want to speak. Colin, you three, um, you've been unmuted. Good evening. Are you waiting to speak? Okay, sounds like uh, that's a, a lingering raised hand. Let's let's check the next one. Uh, the next um, raised hand is Bruce Kennedy, who has already spoken. I will unmute him. Well, he spoke already. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have Rhonda Kessler. Ms. Kessler, you're unmuted. Yes. Do you hear us? We can, yes. Yes, okay. hi, thank you. My name is William Burke and Rhonda, I've lived in Glenhead for two and a half years. I moved there from Massapequa where they had, uh, where I lived about 50 years and they had the municipal supply and we use about the same amount of water. However, we're paying nine times where I paid Massapequa. And it's, it's not a, a true match because I also, had to pay $110 on my, on my, uh, 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 Nassau, not Nassau County, but, uh, town of voice debate taxes for the water district. So it's at least eight times higher. It's, it's maybe not nine times, but it is eight times higher than I was paying in the past. It's outrageous. And Massapequa always took care of the water. They always had very good water and, uh, they, they charged a fair amount. In the 50 years that I was there, they raised the water quite a bit. But at this point now, I'm paying eight times what I paid in Massapequa. My mother, who lived in, in Merrick, had the same situation. And when she, but she was switched over away from New York American Water. And at that point, her, her, um, her bills dropped by about one sixth of what it was. So it's definitely, there's definitely, uh, they're way overcharging and of course we know that they used all kinds of fraudulent information because when we got we looked into the fact that we got a 338 dollar charge that was was being an extra because of the taxes being raised five they called it five thousand percent increased in taxes it's because they they changed the the their estate they changed their uh, their uh, what they said the assets were worth by that match. It wasn't that the town raised their rates 5,000%. They just, they fraudulently changed the value of the properties to make it, make it much higher. Everything they do is very, very crooked. They have terrible customer service and they charge outrageous rates. And I think everybody is sick and tired of this. And I, I applaud Cuomo for, for, uh, for looking into this. I think we're not, being treated fairly in Glenhead. Yeah, and we really want to thank the previous speakers who who've been, you know, so been active. have been so active in doing it. We support their efforts 100%. I support every single person who has spoken before me. They were all 100% right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, before you go, can you just spell your name for the uh, court reporter? Sure. 
The first name is Bill, the last name is Merck, and that's spelled M-O-E-R-C-K. Uh, thank you. Thank Living you very much. Tesla. Well, um, okay, spell her name, please. R-H-O-N-D-A, last name Kessler, K-E-S-S-L-E-R, and we are residents of Glenhead. For how many years? For, for um, 14 years. Um, yeah, about 14 years now. <clears throat> Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you. Um, Aaron, any more uh, hands raised that we haven't checked yet? Yes, we have one more. Mr. Robert Mazzella. Mr. Mazzella, can you hear us? And do you want to uh, speak this evening? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, Thank so you. And just uh, please start by, by spelling your name for the court reporter. Sure. It's Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T. And my last name is Mazzella. Is Michael A Z Z E L L A? Thank you. All right, you're up. Right. I'm a resident of Glenhead. I'm another director from What's Your Concern Citizens. So I'll try not to be overly repetitive. Uh, I also support municipal water um, very strongly. Um, one thing I guess that I haven't heard mentioned, I missed a few things at the beginning though. Um, just want to point out that New York Department of Water does not pay taxes. They collect taxes from their ratepayers and pass those taxes along to the taxing entities. Um, because the Seacliff District um, of New York American Water is a part of our local school district here in North Shore, and there are others who are not part of North American Waters uh, District. This results in a double taxation of sorts for the New York American Water residents. So we are paying our own school taxes, and then we are paying again uh, New York American Waters of the school taxes. So again, it creates an inequity for those of us who live in the school district and have the pleasure of being served in New York American water. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, I want, I'd also like to thank you all for taking the time to talk to us and to thank the governor for taking these extraordinary actions to help protect us. Well, thank you very much. And, and thank you for um, waiting for so long to, to speak. Um, with that, I believe uh, we do not have any more speakers, uh, and our, our tonight's public forum uh, will come to an end. Uh, Commissioners uh, uh, Berman and Edwards, would, anything that you'd like to say before we formally uh, bring the gavel down? No, I, I would say that I am, uh, this was a really very thoughtful evening. And, you know, for the public to take this much time uh, and to hear the history of all of this was really good uh, to be a part of it. And I want to thank you again, special counsel, for uh, putting this together. I think it was really, really good information. I have lots of notes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you and, uh, very much. Commissioner Berman. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate being part of this. Um, and I also want to thank uh, special counsel Lansman and staff for um, hosting this. I appreciate it. Terrific. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you to Zinia Vega, Erin uh, uh, Odell Keller, um, and uh, Nicholas Forrest. And where's uh, Anna's? Anna, Anna Senatore uh, and all the other staff who helped make this happen and, and, and our core reporter. Uh, for those of you who can join us, we will be doing this tomorrow evening, uh, focused on the area of East Massapequa, and then Thursday evening focused on the rest of American Waters uh, Service Territory. Uh, with that, that's all that I have. Erin, um, do you want to formally bring the gavel down? Thank you, Mr. Lansman. Mr. Howard Hubbard, could you uh, please close out the the uh, forum okay one moment we're off the record thank you very much sir thank you everyone and this event everyone is now ended. Thank, thank you, you. Yeah. everybody have a good evening
consider myself someone who stays on top of current affairs, but were I not a Facebook user, I would not have known about these proceedings either. I am not someone who fears nuclear energy. I have lived within three miles of Indian Point for most of my life. I grew up here as a child, I attended the Hendrick Hudson schools, and I returned as an adult because this is such a special community. Indian Point has been a valuable contributor to our community and their employees are our friends, our neighbors, and our families. What does cause me alarm is the high pressure liquid natural gas pipelines that now run through the Indian Point property between the plant and two of its sources of backup emergency power. At the time that the pipeline was going through the approval process, myself and many of my neighbors were up in arms, raising many questions about the safety and wisdom of putting such a potentially catastrophically explosive pipeline so close to a nuclear plant just 40 miles from Manhattan. After witnessing what happened at Fukushima not long ago, we should all be aware of the devastating consequences that could accompany a catastrophic incident at Indian Point and the impacts that it would have not just on our own community, but on the entire tri-state area. And catastrophic is an understatement. In 2019 alone, there were 614 reported pipeline incidents just in the US, resulting in 10 deaths, injuries to another 35, and at least $259 million in damages, according to the Federal Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Association. When this pipeline was first proposed, we raised serious questions to FERC about its safety, its placement, and its construction, and how it was installed. Last February, the Office of the Inspector General of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission released their report and their safety review. Excuse me, they released their report. They found that, there's, that the safety review that was done that allowed this pipeline to go forward was inadequate. And you can view this report at bit.ly slash nypipeline. The OIG report found that not a single metric of the safety study was done properly. The engineer involved used the wrong data, used the wrong software, and seemed to have presented results that were, quote, reverse engineered to achieve a desired result. The two scientists that were tasked with reviewing his work had no idea what he was doing, how he achieved those, those results, and signed off on it rather than um, display their confusion. The report also found numerous other issues, including statements by the pipeline operator that it would take just two minutes to shut down were not accurate, and that in an emergency, it may actually take eight minutes or longer to shut down the flow of flammable gas. As you as a public safety commission move forward, you must do so with the assumption that the pipeline is not safe because every safety measure involved has been called into question by the NRC's own investigator general. Now add to that the numerous safety and integrity questions that have been raised about Holtec in this and the previous hearing, which I'm not going to repeat because we've all heard them and we're all aware of them and I, I trust that they are marked in the record. Holtec is not the only company that is capable of decommissioning this plant. They are not the only business which can purchase the company and then keep on its employees. To move forward based on that belief that they are the only company who can achieve these things is a false and dangerous dichotomy. If anything, history has shown us that Holtec has a reputation of lying to public officials and lying to unions. They have been criticized for freezing out union members and hiring lower cost labor instead when they promised otherwise. Holtec is not our only option. They are simply the only option that makes the most money for Entergy and Holtec's shareholders. When you're talking about the lives and livelihoods of literally every resident of the tri-state area, that's just not good enough. I would like to point out that it only takes three minutes in Charity Navigator to see that every organization which spoke up in favor of the transfer of this licensing at this, the earlier session today are recipi recipients of donations from Entergy and or Holtec. Whether or not a private charity has been supported by a company claiming to be a good corporate citizen has no impact at all on whether you as a public service commission determine that this license transfer is safe. Please take all of the evidence that has been presented to you into consideration. We feel helpless as residents because our voices have seldom been heard. We were railroaded by FERC. Our local elected leaders didn't even know that the plant was closing in the first place, and they certainly had no idea that Holtec, Holtec had been selected. We are depending on you to intervene because our hands have been tied and our voices have been silenced. We need help. We need someone to stick up for the residents and citizens of New York State.
Your job is not to further commercial pursuits of private co corporations. Your job is to determine whether this is a safe and prudent move which will benefit the people of New York. I believe that if you look thoughtfully and carefully at the comments that have been shared today and submitted in writing, you will see very clearly that there are too many risks to move forward with Holtec. When I first became a journalist in 2001, I covered the plan for GE to clean up PCBs from the Hudson and Housatonic rivers. The cleanup was meant to take 10 years. I'd like to point out that just 90 days ago, the EPA issued a permit for the final phase of that cleanup, which is now expected to take another 13 years. I would ask you to consider that when you're considering Holtec's timeline. We all want to see the plant decommissioned safely. We all want to see this property returned to some sort of suitable use. But this is not the company and this is not the way. We are talking about a nuclear plant on a fault line 40 miles from Manhattan with explosive pipelines beneath it. Your margin for error here is zero. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you please state and spell your name for the record, please? My name is Michelle Verna, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-V-E-R-N-A. Thank you. Your Honor. You may be muted, Your Honor. You're muted, Your Honor. This is Judge Sayre. Uh, while Judge Leary tries to uh, reestablish connection, why don't we keep on going? Uh, first, I'd like to ask everyone who has already spoken if they have uh, pressed star three in order to call our attention, please press star three again uh, if you've finished. Uh, secondly, everyone who has raised their hand and already spoken, uh, Again, please hit that hand icon one more time to unraise your hand so that we'll see who is left. I'd like to call on Catherine Skopik at this time. I see your hand is raised. Joe, could you unmute her? Thank you very much, sir. My name is Catherine Skopik, and that is spelled capital C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, -E, last name Skopik, capital S-K-O-P-I-C. I am an educator of many years, a public school up to university graduate students. I have been a representative for an NGO at the United Nations and attended several of the climate conferences worldwide. Uh, and I am recently very involved with uh, two of our existential problems, and that is climate and nuclear, uh, through being chair of various organizations and active for quite a few years in these issues and self-educating as many of us have had to do in these times. Um, I would like to say uh, to thank the Public Service Commission for holding this hearing. Uh, for quite a while, we have been, we, myself and colleagues, concerned about this issue, trying to get a hearing uh, from the NRC and so forth. So we are very, very grateful to you for having this. Uh, I know members of the Public Service Commission you are very well educated yourselves and have a wide background in knowing and understanding uh, climate and environmental issues and the importance of clean energy, sustainable energy, healthy energy. 
Uh, so I think after listening to so many people speaking out on the problems of whole tech, uh, these can begin to register. And it's very difficult to understand uh, in a way how it could be taking this long to make this decision. <laughs> Forgive me for saying that, but it's true. Um, there may be some reason that I'm not aware of, that we are not aware of. Maybe it's just that it would be such an easy thing to do. Uh, Energy is selling it and uh, whole tech is there and wants to buy and do this job. Maybe it's just too easy to say yes. But after listening to everybody you've heard and listening to the criminal problems with the company of whole tech, their abuse of people, of workers, of um, financial systems, uh, that they definitely would not be considered to have the Indian Point la license transferred to them for this important job of decommissioning. This may be the one of, if not the most important decisions you have ever had to make, members of the Public Service Commission. I'm sure there are pressures on you to say yes to Holtec. And I don't know what these pressures are or where they're coming from, but you've heard the voices of the people. And you know how important this is to the lives of over 20 million people in the New York City area and to life in the Hudson River, along the Hudson River. This is a decision that will affect eternity. Radioactive material, even in half-life, is active, is radioactive for a million years, as far as we can tell. So your decision is not only for those of us here on the face of this earth right now, but this is a decision, the results of which will affect generation upon generation upon generation. Many of the Native Americans have a saying that they will not make a decision until they know how it will affect the seventh generation. Can you wrap up, please? Yes, I will. No, do not. Yes, I will wrap up. But please do not accept this license transfer. Reject whole tech for all the reasons you've heard and more. Thank you. Thank you. Jacqueline Dreschler. I apologize. My computer completely seized up. And luckily, you didn't hear me cursing over here. Uh, Ms. Dreschler. Um, your line will be unmuted momentarily. Jacqueline Dreschler. Okay, your line is unmuted. Uh, Mr. White, can you um, mute Ms. Skopik? Thank yes, you. so my name is, thank you. Um, as other people have said, thank you so much for holding this hearing. We've tried and tried to get a hearing with the NRC, which never went anywhere. So my name is Jacqueline Drexler, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-Y-N, last name D-R-E-C-H-S-L-E-R. If I speak now, do I forever have to never speak again or can i still put in a written comment that's my first question of course you can put in a written okay. comment absolutely and i will make it i will make it very short um uh, i will put in a, a lengthy written comment um this license transfer must be denied there are too many issues and problems regarding safety regarding materials regarding the idea of repurposing it for their own nefarious reasons to make money i do believe that if this company is used they will decommission the decommissioning fund um this is a company that is not appropriate for the job so i will i would just like to say that so many people have spoken so eloquently and with so much knowledge i find it very hard to think that with, with everything that we know about this company and everything we know about Indian Point and everything we know about our beautiful Hudson River and radiated water, why is there even a question that Holtec would be the company that would get this bid? 
that's what I would like to say right now. And I will put in lengthy comments um, by the date that's required. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, so what I have on my screen in front of me uh, for everyone who's left on the phone, they have who has their hands up. Many of you have already spoken. So I want to ask you to press star three if you are a call in user and lower that hand. If you are a computer user, please use that icon on your uh, computer to lower your hand. So Ms. Dreschler, Ms. Walter, Mr. Foskett, and Ms. Bowles, please lower your hand so we can figure out who is left that has not spoken yet. Okay. This is not actually working very well, but what about call in user 48 your honor? I see that their hand is up. Do you want me to try I to do see them? that. Let's go with uh, unmuting call in user 48. You do not know that that's you, but hopefully you'll hear the beep. Did you hear? Did you? You're unmuted right now. Call call in user. You are unmuted. You want to try it again? I was talking, so maybe try it again. So, okay, I'll I'll mute them and then unmute them and they'll hear a beep. Did you hear a beep? Okay, I don't see them coming on, Your Your Honor. So we might want to go on to the next one. Okay, do you want to try and try call in user thirty four? There you are. Uh, are you, I have spoken before. This is Marilyn Elling. I'm on the phone. Oh, so I, don't a, I don't have a hand okay. to put down. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's move on. I don't see um, Mr. White and Judge Sayre. I don't see any other participants. No other, no other, no other uh, callers. Sorry, Your Honor. No other callers. Okay, um, I'm not sure that Ruth Walter has spoken yet. Oh, I'm sorry. That you were absolutely right, Miss Walter. Let's. Um, I thought you were on deck, and I thought you might have been heard already. So I apologize. You want to unmute Ruth Walter, Mr. White? Hello. I did get called on earlier. I'm so sorry, but. Um, I missed my call and I've been waiting to uh, to get called again. So thank you very much for your um, for your patience this evening. I know you've had a long day, um, and I uh, my testimony is this. Uh, my name is Ruth Walter. I am the Westchester County Legislator for District 15. I represent North Yonkers, East Yonkers, and the Village of Bronxville. I sit on the Public Works and Transportation Committee, as well as Budget and Acquisition, Parks and Recreation and planning economic development and energy. I'm also the chair of environment and health committee. My commitment to clean water, clean air and clean food is one of the biggest reasons that I ran for office and that thousands of my constituents voted for me. I don't need to tell this board how vital the issue of the environment is to young people and so many others who have taken time out of their schedule to call in today. I also support the expertise and experience of skilled labor at the power plant. We've heard from carpenters, steam fitters, and other union workers whose decades of experience at the plant have kept us safe for decades. I thank them for their service to Westchesterites and all New Yorkers. There can be no greater existential threat to our health, our economy, and our future than the decommissioning of Indian Point Power Plant. PSC must take the incredible history of this plant into account when it votes up or down on this sale. We've seen where local governments go cheap and go fast. It can be extremely expensive and environmental disaster. Think of Flint, Michigan and Fukushima power plant. Those come to mind immediately. So many folks have spoken before me and more emphatically about what an unacceptable record 
that Holtec has and why Holtec is not the environmentalist or taxpayer choice for decommissioning. We need to keep good jobs at the plant. Steam fitters, carpenters, teamsters among them. We need their expertise and their experience to continue for the entirety of the decommissioning period. We need to keep the safety of the millions of residents of the area, including New York City, the top priority of this public service commission. I urge you to listen to local residents, local elected officials, and the extremely negative experience of other Holtec customers across the country to find a better vendor. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you very much, Ms. Walter. Um, I am satisfied that we've heard from just about everyone that has registered or has raised their hand. If we have missed anyone, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace uh, by using your raised hand function. Give you a minute. Okay, I do not see any. Um, uh, Your Honor, Your Honor. Yes. yes. Um, uh, number 44, possibly. Should we cool. try? And 34 try, just. Try. Try 30, again. 34 just raised their hand. Okay, try again. Okay, go ahead. Your phone has been unmuted. <laughs> I think you, you called on Marilyn Ellie again. I have spoken. Okay, try 40, try 44. Oh, 44 put their hand down. Oh, your line is unmuted. Hello, I'm Annie oh. Wilson. Uh, Sorry, state your, state your name again. Annie Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. And first, uh, thank you very much for having a hearing on behalf of the state that should be implicitly involved in the oversight and not rely on Holtec for any type of uh, accountability or participation in this process. Hopefully there will be a better way to address the decommissioning process and uh, there would be better advisors in some kind of system that will be the outcome of this proceeding, hopefully. And so with regard to many of the comments that have been made, which are much more informed than mine, I would like to add that with regard to what is the, the pipelines, and the disregard for those pipelines and whether or not the state will be considering that issue as part of the complete decommissioning process and how that would or would not be isolated is also something that I'd be curious to see will be what be as an outcome. And the other point is with regard to the decommissioning process itself and with regard to what was raised earlier as the um, pool of water under the plant, which will be released at some point, will there be, as part of the state, and uh, if there's not, there should be, as part of the state, a comprehensive environmental review of all of the impacts onto the river and the sediment in the Hudson River that has been impacted by all the years of the use of the plant and the nucleotides or whatever other releases have impacted the river. Um, I think this is a very important study. So I wanted to add that the precedent of this decommissioning and other decommissionings, hopefully towards all of the decommissionings in the United States, that has been one of the first decommissionings. It is so important to get it right. It is so important for this process to be as safe as possible not to rush and to benefit all stakeholders, particularly the community, the, uh, the community next to Indian Point and everyone else that is impacted by this closing nuclear facility. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't see any other hands. Um, I want to remind everyone, uh, for those of you uh, on computers, you see on your screen the other ways to comment. For those of you who may be on the phone, 
you can write to the secretary at her email address, which is secretary at dps.ny.gov. Uh, our secretary's name is Michelle Phillips, and you can also mail uh, a comment to her by um, you know, regular mail. And finally, um, the department accepts comments electronically. Uh, www.dps.ny.gov. Any way you any in any way that you are going to comment, don't forget to include the appropriate case number, which is 19 hyphen E hyphen 0730. And you can search uh, by that case number once you are on our website. Um, I want to thank um, Commissioner Howard uh, for your wonderful patience and and being with us not only this afternoon for four hours, but this evening for many more hours and many thanks. Uh, thank you to Judge Sayre, Mr. White, our host, Ms. Wasser, and in absentia, um, the head of the Office of Consumer Services, Erin Odell Keller. She had uh, all of the office had uh, their plates full today with other public statement hearings beyond this one. So I am going to conclude this public statement hearing and we are off the record. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and um, stay safe and healthy. Good Thank night. Thank you everyone. Have a good evening.